Welcome to the Town of Arlington Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, September 9th, the year is 2013. I want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded and it is going out live, but a technical note uh, came from ACMI that uh, this will not be available for rebroadcast. rebroadcast. It will only be available uh, using their on-demand feature because of a technical problem, uh, but it is going out live uh, right now. Um, I'd like to open, I'll talk, uh, it's a sad note, uh, a former member of the Board of Selectmen uh, passed away, Robert Murray, who served the town from 76 to 87 on this board. Uh, he was a champion of affordable housing before my time, and uh, I would appreciate a moment of silence in his memory. Thank you. Uh, also tonight, I'd like to note that this is uh, Juliana Rice's last meeting with us, and so uh, I, I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk about this later in a new business, but at the same time I will say up front, I've valued your counsel and you've made me a better selectman by being able to give me advice and I'm gonna, we're, I'm gonna miss you a lot. Uh, finally, something good to talk about. Yay! Town Day, September 21st. Uh, Ms. Marie Kropelka informs me we have 340 vendors signed up, tables, all, Two. 240. Uh, see, that's what I get for You just wiped out the waiting list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, September 21st, make sure you check the, the website. Uh, you know, of course, fireworks, dogs, booths. The night before. Uh, all that good <clears throat> stuff. Uh, and Marie will be talking about that more later on. Okay. On to the agenda. Number one under is the consent agenda. We have the minutes of meetings for August 19th, 2013, and I note that we have on our desk a revised minutes, and we're gonna be voting on the revised minutes uh, that, it were, that are loose on your desk right now. We have a request for a contractor Drayton Lair license uh, for Tufts Incorporated. Request for two different one-day beer and wine licenses on 920 and 921 for the Arlington High School 50th reunion. We have reappointments to the Arlington Preservation Fund of Clark Griffith, P Patrick Guthrie, Albert Stevens to expire in 2014, and Andrew Fisher, Amy Slade to expire on uh, February of 2016, Carol Kowalski and John Warden to expire on July 2016. We have a reappointment to the Registrar of the Board of Voter, excuse me, Board of Registrar of Voters, Florence McGee. And we have an approval for the St. Agnes School 125th Anniversary Fun Walk Run on September 28th. Is there anyone here who wanted to talk about any of those events? Build approval. Second, and just if I Ms. can make one, one note, I just want to be clear that it's my understanding under 1C, the request for the two days, that for nine uh, no, the 921 events, that there will be a police detail from 6 to 10 but not on the Friday night one. Okay. And, and, and they're aware of that, and that's yeah. been, okay. Mm -hmm. That was recommended by the police department because they'll be going across Mass Ave. The, the event at the Whit Robbins Whittemore, there's not that much crossing. Okay, thank you. Safety involved. Uh, so we have a motion from Mr. Greeley and a second from Mrs. Mahan. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Next up, request support of Robbins Farm Dog Statue Project. Rolly Chapman. We all want to know, is the dog leashed or unleashed? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It's nice to see you again. This little uh, project of ours has been going on since last January. I gave you some material ahead of time. I hope you got it. Yep. We had, um, at our annual meeting in January, invited <clears throat> Bill Armstrong, Armstrong Ambulance, be our guest speaker. Turns out that Bill lived over on Highland Ave, so he grew up on Robbins Farm when Farmer Robbins was there. He remembers Farmer Robbins milking the cow, Helen, climbing the apple trees, and sitting on the dog. And one of the pictures that you have there shows uh, the dog that was installed probably in the 1880s or so. We're not 100% we're not sure. It was a cast iron dog and it was sat outside uh, facing east. Uh, we, th we think sus 
we suspect anyway that Mrs. Robbins really wanted that dog to be a guard dog. Um, apparently it worked, but sadly when the house was demolished, it was a beautiful house, as you can see in that picture, uh, the dog disappeared. We subsequently found out that perhaps the dog went at the same time that the house was demolished. We're not 100% sure about that. <clears throat> There's no real records. We have a record that shows when the house was demolished in the early 50s, but you know, there's nothing about the dog. But there was an article published in the Globe by Brock Parker about this whole project, and that we were looking for the dog statue. A few days later, I got a telephone call. A follow up called and said, oh, I remember sitting on this dog, you know. Yeah, that's wonderful. We have a number of people. He said, yeah, but I was doing it when the dog was in Somerville. <laughs> So we suspect, we're not sure, but we think it went with the demolition contractor and it ended up in that backyard down there in Somerville. So I said to him, well, where's the dog now? He says, unfortunately it's gone. My mother's house was demolished and they had built an apartment house. Mm. So that particular dog was gone. So we went then looking to find a copy of the dog. And what we were able to find, and you'll see a picture I gave you there, is one in Houston, Texas. Now we did look at four or five different dogs. In fact, we looked at more than that, but we wanted a dog that looked pretty much exactly the same as the one that was up there, big enough for the kids to sit on, and so forth. And this particular dog um, met those requirements. We think, we think the original dog was done by a fellow named Hoppins back in 1850 or so, who um, wanted to commemorate his dog who woke up the family when the house was on fire. And so he made this dog. And that dog stayed in Providence and has subsequently been relocated to the Roger Williams Zoo. We contacted those folks, but had not we heard back from them. The reason we were looking for a, a, a dog that was already existent meant that we could have a copy made rather than start from scratch. So it would save some money. And so we've been able to work cooperatively with a, um, an artist in Houston in cooperation with the people from the Historic Society. They own the house, which is where the do there are two dogs. One faces left, one faces right, on both sides of the front sidewalk. And we were able to negotiate to have the left-facing dog uh, copied for us and then shipped up here in bronze, not cast iron. Bronze is a much more durable material. I mean, there's been bronze statues around since, who knows, thousands of years, and they hold up. And so, yes, the one we're gonna have done is in bronze. And the picture that you see there uh, is um, th that one. I, I'll, I, have one, I have one color picture. I'll just pass it around so you can have a chance to, to see what, what, the, what the bronze looks like, okay? Uh, we're about, 75% along on the project. We've already gone to the Park and Rec Commission and made a presentation. They gave us the go ahead to pursue this project. There were some questions obviously that needed to be resolved, not the least of which is where to put the dog. <laughs> there are several locations, potentials, and we haven't got that really decided yet. Um, so we're, you know, we're coming along. We are privately funded. We found someone who was willing to help us out. So there's no cost to the town other than Depending on the location, we may have to ask the DPW to pour a blob of concrete uh, somewhere up there to put the dog on. But other than that, the cost is ours. We get it done, and then we'll present it to the town, and we think, we think that the dog represents a, a commemorative feel, f feeling for what Mr. Robbins was really doing. He had this wonderful uh, farm up there for many, many years, loved kids, loved kids, and wanted to make sure that that property went to the town, sold it to the town for $33,000, which sounds like it might have been a lot of money in, uh, I don't know, 1948 or nine or something, dropping the bucket compared to what it's worth now. So it was really wonderful for him to do that, and so that's really what we're doing here. Our game plan is to come up with something that commemorates Mr. Robbins and the farm itself. And so so there you have it. And so what you're looking for is our general approval? Yeah, we'd just like to have your support primarily. 
No, that's right. I, I was going to move love and receipt, but if you no. just want to move receipt. Move receipt and approval of support. And I Rolly, why left facing? I know because you put the dog this way, it'll, it'll match what was there. What was gotcha. Yeah, and see the dog faced east towards the city. Yeah. So that's what we got asked for. Mrs. Mahan? Two things. One, I'm I know you're contemplating. The second one, you may be, and I'm not sure. My preference would be, and not being silly or sarcastic, for the tail not to be up like that. Just <laughs> for safety issues as well as somebody gets a little rambunctious. A little controversial, I but I agree with I you, Diane. I know you're looking at it, but I know there's debate amongst the We ran into people. the same argument with Park and Rick. Right. And so my personal solution, mm -hmm. make it a stub. Yeah, yeah. Make it a but stub. I know there's it's, no it's, handle. It's being discussed, so I Yes, we were very concerned personal, about the fact that that yeah. tail is pointed. I don't yeah. want some yeah. kid putting his eye out and suing That's what I'm saying, for safety as well as it's exactly. too... Yeah. You know, someone wants to prove fact, how strong they are. So um, hopefully, when we're finished on the installation, mm -hmm. around the dog on the base will be at six inches of wood chips, mm -hmm. so if the kids fall over, right. then we'll get hurt. And then I don't know if you can incorporate this, but I know through our economic tourism development committee, as well as some of the developers in the town, I know Sims 360 has done it with their memorial park, um, and the chairman's going to have to help me with this, <clears throat> where they have statues and plaques and things like that. They have that little square thing that if you have like an iPhone or something, it tells you a uh, story. What's QR it called? Code. What is it? QR code. QR code. If you might want to explore that, if there's a place that it can go there and it can explain the history of the dog, that it's a replica, but it was, you Well, know. we are going to do a plaque. Right, but no you question. can do. You want to put the, uh, I didn't know you could do that. Is that yes. true? Someone want to yeah. explain oh, yeah, it more okay, artfully? That's a great idea. Yeah. Can someone great explain idea. it more artfully so than a, I? Uh, I think you got it. I mean, you oh. point your phone at it, and your phone detects what it is. That it's a QR code, and takes you to a web page that has more information sure. than you can fit on a plaque. And it looks like a plaque, plaque, like plaque Rorschach a <laughs> thing or something. I don't know. Yeah. When you that's ride the good, you know, That's really a good point, because when we got some, talking about a plaque, the fellow that I was talking to was at Skylight Studios over in uh, Woburn that does these. He said, be a little careful. It gets very expensive. They charge you by the letter. Yeah. By the letter, so it can be pretty costly. Yeah, that's this good thing's idea. Is a little bit bigger than a postage stamp. Thank you. Yeah. Further conversation? No. I think it's a good idea. Right. All right. Uh, uh, so we have a motion. I think we'll take that one from Mrs. Mahan because she started first, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Oh. <laughs> I do love the idea. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Five zero. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for We'll keep you posted. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, introduction of newly appointed Zoning Board of Appeals member Christian Klein. So, uh, last <coughs> meeting, we appointed Mr. Klein because there was a pressing time. Uh, ordinarily, we interview them as a board before we do the appointment, but in this case, we did the order. We took it out of order. Thank you for coming. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about why you're interested in the, uh, the board and what you bring to it? Sure. Uh, my name is Christian Klein. I'm a Newport Street resident here in Arlington. Um, I'm a town meeting member, a short-term member of the um, Zoning Bylaw Review Committee, and I've been basically just looking for different ways to, uh, to help serve the town. Um, I served with Rowley on the Friends of Robbins Farm Park Board, and um, this opportunity arose. Uh, there were several spaces available. Um, I had the chance to talk with Joe Kiro at a party uh, for the ACA, and he recommended that this might be something I would consider. And, uh, I, I appreciate um, your faith in me, having uh, essentially voted for me without having met me first. So thank you. Cool. And you're an architect. Yes, I'm a practicing architect here in Massachusetts. Questions? Move approval and just yeah. one. Um, I also want to say, work with Mr. Klein, Christian, on he's been very active in getting involved in Arlington politics when we sort of piggybacked on Bill Berkowitz's idea about having a precinct town meeting member review night. Um, it, which was really a good success for our first kickoff, and um, you definitely were de dedicated to that and made that event as successful as possible. So this is yet another offshoot, and I want to thank you for coming forward to do this. Welcome. Mr. Carroll. I just note that uh, by virtue of being on the board of the Friends of Robbins Farm Park, that Mr. Klein is also a uh, recent uh, Selectman's Honor Awards um, recipient, so uh, we're, we're glad to see you stepping up to the, for yet another uh, You got a hat trick going there. There we go. <laughs> Good year. Mr. Greeley. Yeah, I was thank you for the service you've already, already provided and oh, so much welcome. for your willingness to do this. Oh, Don't hate us after your first, like, two <laughs> meetings. <laughs> Have you had your first meeting yet? Uh, no, the first hearing is on the 24th. Nice. 
I'll set there. All right. Uh, so we have a motion, I think, to yeah, to approve. To approve the, the route to redundant, but why not? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up would be the Arlington Cultural Council, but that application has been withdrawn. So I'm going to move on to number five, which was the approval of the interagency agreement with the for the police department. I saw Chief Ryan. Welcome, Chief. Chief. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the board, Chaplain. This, uh, <coughs> this agenda item is seeking your approval of an interagency uh, mutual aid agreement pursuant to Chapter 40, Section 8, 8G of the Massachusetts General Laws. Back in 1998, uh, Arlington Town Meeting adopted um, Chapter 48G, and we do have some more narrowly focused mutual aid agreements in place um, that rely on 8G. This one is wider in scope in that um, the goal is to have every uh, law enforcement agency in Middlesex County enter into a similar agreement so that would be countywide jurisdiction for all police officers who are on duty within the county. And there are several reasons for that. Um, uh, back about 20 years ago, under a, an SJC decision known as the Commonwealth versus LeBlanc, the SJC ruled that a police officer had to have an arrestable offense in his or her own jurisdiction before they could follow the violator outside of their jurisdiction. That rendered many intersections um, unenforceable for uh, regular uh, civil infractions. River Street at the Medford Line, by the time somebody runs a red light, by the time we get them stopped, they're in Medford. We can't enforce the, the traffic signal. Uh, Park Ave um, at the Belmont line, same situation. But moving uh, fast forwarding to the uh, recent uh, terrorist attacks in Boston, we had officers deployed in Boston and Watertown, and I have no idea whether they had jurisdiction or not. And you could argue that they didn't. And so as a result of, um, of the recent tragic events combined with the day-to-day -day operational challenges uh, that that decision presented to us, uh, I was tasked with chairing a committee of police chiefs. Um, I didn't know what the heck I was doing, so I <laughs> went to Juliana and sought her advice, and she um, uh, stepped up and uh, completed a very difficult task and made me look intelligent. And uh, we put together this MOU. It's gone out uh, countywide. City councils and, and boards of selectmen throughout the county are, are, are being asked for approval as you are tonight. And um, I would just point out uh, one last point of information, and that is uh, that uh, the police chiefs have gone to the legislature every year for the past 20 years and sought relief, legislative relief. And in fact, right in the LeBlanc decision, the SJC decision, the SJC points out there's a very easy legislative fix to this problem. And the legislature has failed us every single year at, at uh, implementing a solution to this problem. And I'm not going to speak for, for them and why they haven't stepped up and done it. That's just a fact. And um, more recently, the SJC took up a case up in northern Essex County known as the uh, Bartlett I forgot the, which jurisdiction it was, Commonwealth versus Bartlett. And, um, and they made a decision based on one of these MOUs, very similar to what you have before you, <coughs> and ruled that they are, in fact, lawful and enforceable. So with all of that, I respectfully ask that you authorize, excuse me, Tom Manager Adam Chapelain to go ahead and execute the agreement. Mr. Greeley. Move approval. Uh, support or do you need more than that for permits? Just that, you know, we need your authorization uh, for the manager to sign it under under HG. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Dis discussion. Joe has questions. Oh, Joe. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry, Joe. Thank you. Thank thank you, Chief, uh, sure. for this. I have to admit, like as I often do on uh, board weeks, I was uh, reviewing my packet really late after a, on a Sunday night after a long weekend. Did that put you to sleep? Did it? Yeah. No. Well, no. What woke me up is I, I misread the phrase "extraterritorial police authority" as "extraterrestrial uh, police authority." <laughs> <laughs> <I> said, Whoa! <laughs> we're good, but we're not that good. <laughs> <laughs> They're not that far. That, that that woke me up. 
Um, I, I just had two questions. I was just wondering, I, I know that a lot of times with details, uh, we have to rely on um, other uh, jurisdictions to send their officers over to cover details. Do they currently have this, this type of yeah, authority? Yeah, that's actually a great question. So right now we have um, a similar agreement, more narrowly uh, defining our officer's authority in only contiguous jurisdictions for details only. <clears throat> This would enable all on-duty Arlington police officers yeah. to cross over town borders for law enforcement, for legitimate and lawful law enforcement purposes. Okay. Thank you. And the other question I had is um, if uh, an officer from one jurisdiction uh, goes, goes to a neighboring ju jurisdiction and is ac activated or self-activated, um, are they only authorized to enforce state and federal laws or also the, the local laws of the jurisdiction that they're It would give them full, full police authority. Uh, I should point out, um, um, and you reminded me, that we also drafted a model policy statement okay. that will be issued by the chiefs of police in all the respective jurisdictions that really um, you know, ensures the civil rights of all violators are being upheld and, and all the traditional uh, policy type statements you would expect from a, um, um, from a chief of police. Right. But it would, it would give them full authority. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for the work on this. Mrs. Bahana. Thank you, Chief. Good to see you. I was going to call you today and things just got away from me, so I apologize. So very brief answers are, are definitely appropriate if I need more follow-up. Yes, ma'am. Um, the terms of agreement, it says that it's going to be maintained by the Secretary of the Middlesex Chief of Chiefs of Police Association or his or her designee. Do we know, number one, who that person is and or is it going to be his or her, her designee? And then I have a piggyback question to that. It, uh, currently, the elected secretary of the Middlesex Chiefs is Chief Robert Bongiorno. You may re recall that name. Sounds right. familiar. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, he will be the keeper <laughs> of the records. Uh, we will also, uh, once all of these agreements are executed, we'll put them on file at all the uh, district courts, juvenile courts, and the Middlesex DA's office as well. Okay, and then the next question applies to this as well as the actual MOU itself. In terms of who oversees the agreement, Chief Bongiorno, is that a term? Every three years it comes up, every five years, or is it just ad infinitum? And the same thing with this actual MOU. It's just going to be in perpetuity, or is there some sort of thing where you all, Police Chiefs Association, sits down and does something? Right. The, the MOU is um, effective uh, unless it's rescinded, as indicated in the agreement, okay. um, by any of the parties. Mm -hmm. And the Secretary's term is two years, I believe, in the Middlesex Chiefs of Police. Okay. And then under the notification, <coughs> 605 notification to receiving party of exercise of police powers. This is just because I can't see it in my head. Um, at the end where it says that to ensure that the police officers properly recorded all the facts, circumstances of the arrest, biographical data, da 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 da. Am I to understand that, that the arresting officer compiles all this information and then somebody else, either real time or peer review? looks into that? Like, I'm just trying to see how that plays out in my head, because right. I've so, never been a police uh, officer. So, for example, a Lexington police officer follows a suspect in Arlington, conducts an investigation, and makes an arrest. The on-duty shift commander in Arlington um, has the authority to get all of that booking data, as we call it, before <laughs> Lexington takes the detainee back to Lexington. And, you know, these are operational decisions and, and um, issues that occur yeah. in the field. I want to clear in my head because sometimes not with Arlington or any of our surrounding communities, but sometimes there's sort of a, even right. though there's an agreement, a territorial issue, and if it's definitely clarified, I just want to know what right. that process was. And then my, I, I understand it's not necessarily the Board of Selectmen signing this. We're going to authorize the town manager. You don't need our signatures or just the chairs. No, we need a vote of the board. Okay, and then a signature. And then my last question, it isn't really, I don't think, it's probably just implied under the contract, but I want to check. You have liability and indemnification. My question would be if one of our officers responds and for some reason suffers a medical injury, who covers that? Is that just regular? They're Island? employed by us. They're so, be covered by us. No different than pre-LeBlanc. Okay. That question's come up a lot, and my answer has been, you know, the same as it was before LeBlanc was, was enacted. <laughs> the, the employing agency... Um, assumes uh, responsibility for its employees. Yeah. You know, I'd point out 
There was an incident really that motivated me before Watertown on this and how I got appointed to the committee. We had a report of a, um, a domestic down on Boulevard Road, couple, several 911 calls. A couple had pulled off of the parkway in a motor vehicle and had gotten in a violent domestic uh, altercation. And there was an infant in that, in that automobile. And um, the victim was thrown out of her car and the perpetrator fled the scene in the car with the infant in a violent, enraged state. Um, we dispatched officers. One of the officers came down Route 2 into Elwife and literally saw the guy drive by with the infant and called his supervisor and said, I see the car, Sarge. What do you want me to do? <coughs> so as I sat and listened to that, that radio activity, I realized that I was really failing our officers and not giving them the tools they need to do their job mm -hmm. because that sergeant was left with, with two bad decisions. <laughs> One, stop it to make sure the baby is safe and everybody's safe and lose the criminal case. Or two, don't stop it and wait until we can get Cambridge to stop it and put the, put the child in harm's way. So, you know, as I sat back, I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm failing. Our, I know the legislature's failed me, but I'm failing my officers by not. And the reason this hasn't been done, frankly, is because it's a, it's, it's a heck of a lot of work. And somebody had to, you know, finally after 20 years, somebody had to take the bull. And so our committee has done that. And we're doing the work town by town and city by city. So uh, it's really giving our officers the tools they need to ensure public safety, it's, you know, it's, it's, and it's, it's I, very I know closely the monitored by yeah, policy. The and, I understand the political tug of war, and it is a simple fix, but then you all, I, I want to thank you and the Middlesex <coughs> Chiefs of the Police Association for all this wor extra work on this. And once again, I'm proud to say our police chief um, is involved. And I would say 75% of the questions that I asked you, it really is just the court reporter in me. I just want to be able to say, and it was discussed, you know, I'm anticipating possible yeah. future, not in Arlington. So thank you very much. But, you know, as I said, Juliana uh, Thank you, deserves Julie. the accolades on, on <laughs> Sorry, the way out yes. the door. <laughs> Kevin. So, uh, thanks, Chief. Um, excellent work, as always. Uh, what if one community doesn't have as enlightened a board of selectmen as this one and support this? Uh, what, what, if a, what if a board of selectmen says no or a mayor says no? Does then that, that, then that the jurisdiction board? will simply not be um, a, par a party to this agreement. Um, and that, that's a likely possibility, <coughs> although I will say that this is getting some legs statewide. Uh, I know the statewide organization of Mass Chiefs have, have looked at this model and others. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's a cumbersome and difficult solution to the problem. We recognize that having uh, 251 cities and towns, you know, entering into AG agreements. But if our legislature is, is, is not concerned about situations such as uh, Watertown and, and officers not having uh, proper jurisdiction, then, then we just need to do the difficult work. And I think Framingham just voted that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have about 20, I believe, cities and towns that have already acted on this. And that was, was going to be my second question. Are there other jurisdictions that have such an agreement already? <clears throat> there are. I mentioned the Northern uh, Essex County uh -huh. Bartlett decision. So there were four communities that apparently share a, some sort of common retail area. And they, they entered into one of these AG agreements um, uh, a while back. And an officer uh, was in a neighboring jurisdiction, witnessed a drunk driver driving very dangerously, stopped the car, and the SJC upheld the case. Mm. We, uh, we as the board and uh, with Adam's um, leadership, uh, looked at uh, always want to continue to look at regionalization opportunities, and this is a formalization of such a thing, which right. is awesome. Yeah. Thank you for it. Thank you, sir. Steve. No, I uh, just want to thank you as well, Chief. And I just to piggyback off of Kevin that we did have a regionalization forum last year, and this is the um, you know direction I think all towns will be moving to um, you know going forward and are looking at how to kind of tackle big issues with each other's help. And I am uh, really appreciative that you, you know, as you said, grabbed the bull by the horn and uh, took this one uh, to the plate for us. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Uh, I've got, I guess, two uh, questions. So, so I, I, um, first is, so not at all police departments are created equal. If there's someone, if there, we have an issue with um, another officer in Arlington, 
Um, like, if, you know, if someone complains to me, I know who to talk to, right? If someone, do we know who to talk to? Do, is there anything? Yes, the, the policy uh, uh, that goes along with the MOU that you, that you don't have to vote on uh, leaves the employing agency to investigate any complaints against any police officers acting outside of their jurisdiction. But it doesn't disempower us from okay. participating in and assisting in those investigations. Okay. Um, my second question is: So do, this, does this get Boston involved at all, or is this that's still just that's another task? Yeah, that, I mean, they're Suffolk County right now. The goal is to get all the Middlesex County agencies uh, signed on board. The, the other issue here is. You know, cr crime is very different than it used to be. We just talked about holding your iPhone up to a dog and getting a web page. I mean, you know, um, the, elect the electronic, well, I want to see that, by the way. Um, um, the anatomy of a dog on the web, right? But, um, you know, so some of the electronic crime, inv uh, criminal investigations that we're, we're handling now, uh, bank fraud cases, bad checks, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, cyber threats, bullying, a lot of these have multi-jurisdictional elements to them and we're always hindered by well, who's who owns this well now if if it's a Middlesex County uh, pact you know we can have uh, criminal investigations across jurisdictions that um, that provide services to victims that weren't otherwise being provided there's nothing worse than having a victim come into the lobby with a terrible tragic story and say oh you, you know you got that text while you're in Cambridge or oh, you gotta go tell the story again in Cambridge you know, so there, there are other value-added benefits. While those are, are not the primary intent of this MOU, there are other value-added benefits to the MOU that will uh, uh, empower our staff to better serve our, our citizens. Okay, thank you. Is there any further comments or discussion? Ready for a vote? Yep. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, 5-0. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Thank you again to Juliana. Thank, thank you, Chief. Chief. Okay, next up, uh, uh, Common Victualler uh, and Wine and Malt License to Transfer. Christopher Rizza, JJ Sue and family doing business as Thai Isarn Cuisine, the former Tom Young Kuhn. Hi. Hi, could you introduce Good yourself? And honorable members of the board. Um, I'm Christopher Rizza, I'm the president of the uh, company JJ Sue and family, going to be um, Thai Isarn Cuisine, our doing business as name and we're applying for a common victualler and wine and malt license transfer from the business formerly known as Tom Yam Kung. Um, we've done some, done, even though not recommended or required, we've done trips, uh, tips trainings from, for um, serving liquor, my, uh, my wife Joy, the treasurer and vice president of the company, and myself, and um, we've done the plan review process and we're all just about ready to go. Ms. Greeley. Are you sure she shouldn't be the president? I'm just wondering. Uh, thank you very Probably much. Probably a better public speaker than me, but. <laughs> thank you very much for choosing Arlington. Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. All right, we have a second. Co questions, comments? Steve, sorry. Uh, well, I, I did have one more question. Oh, uh, samples? Did you bring samples this evening? <laughs> Not yet, no. <laughs> Not yet, good answer. <laughs> Steve. Um, I want to thank you for providing the alcohol serving plan. Um, that's not something we see all the time um, in these applications, and we uh, just dealt with this, you know, over the past two meetings we had actually, and I think these are that's you know a proactive step in providing that to us. Um, I was wondering um, if you could you talk a little bit about the logbook that you plan to have on premises, yes, and uh, the type of incidents you'll be putting right, into that it. That was um, also in the tips training. I thought it was a good idea to implement that if something, God forbid, ever was to occur. Can you give an example of what that um, might be? Yeah, it's basically, um, it's a, it, you basically like log like who the employee was who was working, what the date the incident occurred, and a description of the incident. So if police ever need to be called or anything is a kind of a step-by-step -step thing of what, a, a explanation of what occurred. Cool, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Anybody else? Other questions? Um, I do have one to piggyback on Steve's. So Sure. Uh, I was just, uh, I also I was glad to see that in here. I was wondering if you had any thought to, to actually placing very prominently what your policy 
is as far as IDing <coughs> patrons so that the patrons actually um, see yeah, it. Yeah, I was looking the, into, the, um, I also work at a, um, a drugstore in Peabody. I work at CVS Pharmacy, and we have the um, under 27 week card. It's usually used for tobacco, but I'm looking into maybe getting a signage of something for alcohol. Good. Yep. Great. Thank you. Ms. Amato? Um, piggyback on one note. I, I think many, many years ago when I worked at ABCC, the logbook, is it correct? Like, say you have a, an unruly patron and you have to shut him or her off. Right. That's the kind of thing that you would document in there, especially if something came forth from that. Yes. And you did have to involve outside police or other involvement. You've covered that. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, you know, making sure you, you adhere to the don't serve anyone under 21, caught them if they're 31 or old, younger. Um, that's a sort of different kind of okay and then the only other thing I, if you know and if you don't that's fine are you going to be using the same uh, trash waste removal company as the previous owner we currently are yes okay I just want to make sure I mean it's just the apartments above on Mass Ave yeah. that have people I just want to make sure they're aware someone came in last week that had somebody brand new and I just don't want to I'm trying to stop the Neighbors calling me, yeah. which they should call any one of us at 5:30 if they want, and they yeah. do. They, they just uh, supplied me with a very alarming bill. I didn't know I had to pay the following month, also. So I kind of just had a little bit of a wake up on that. So yes, but, my dad would say they get you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, and Absolutely. good luck. Thank you. Uh, so I wanted to. Uh, th you got a bunch of different questions and compliments on some of the stuff that you're doing on the alcohol policy, and I just wanted to tell you I don't know you, you you probably don't come or watch every selectman's meeting and which is and you shouldn't or there's no need to but we had uh, a year ago we had three restaurants that failed the alcohol inspection and this past year we had six and if you look at the people who failed there's often a pattern of um, they don't have a good system for hiring and training and maintaining and like retraining reminding new employees so I really encourage you to um, Think about that and figure out what system you can build that's not good because I know you're doing a million things trying to launch your restaurant and I wish you the best of luck and I want you to be very successful and among other things you're in walking distance to my home and so <laughs> and I so and I enjoy uh, Thai food um, but I don't also don't you know we had like including one of the restaurants are right across the street from you they opened and then four months later they were here for all the wrong reasons. So I just want you to, I know you're busy and I know you're stressed out and I know there's a lot of things, but build a system that's gonna last you for many years so you don't run into any difficulties. Okay. Any further discussion? Any of the neighbors who want to, here who want to speak? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Five zero. Thank you, good luck. Thank you, good luck. Next up, request common victual and all alcohol <coughs> license, new public entertainment, outside seating and cafe permit. Bob O'Gwin, Blog LLC, uh, doing business as Common Ground of Arlington. Mr. Leone, welcome. Good evening, how y'all doing tonight? I'm here with Bob O'Gwin. Um, Bob's 45, he and his wife Laurie uh, want to open a new restaurant in Arlington at the abandoned Gemma site. <coughs> Is we're here for five different permits tonight. The common victualler, the all alcohol, public entertainment, awning, and the outside seating and patio. Um, I think in your packages you've gotten pictures of the inside and the outside of the building. I brought one here so they can see out in TV land. I'm sorry, you said five, but I only, what's the fifth? It's victualler, victuallers, all alcohol, public entertainment, and awning, and patio seating. We didn't advertise awning. Uh, or at least it's not on my agenda. Uh, uh, so, Juliana, do you mind contemplating that issue? But I'm going to have him keep going. Yeah, we can always do the on the but, but, Sorry. I, please. Um, what Bob's, Bob's in. Um, I'm going to call him Bob. At this point, I'm very familiar with the math of the ARB hearings. Um, he wants to re rehabilitate the abandoned Gemma site with a 196 seat restaurant. The front will be 106 seats for day-to-day -day service, and in the back, he's gonna have 90 seats for an event function hall, which will only be used for events and functions. It won't ever be used for day-to-day um, -day overflow seating for the front of the restaurant. You all should have this plan. Um, I gave Marianne one the other day, showing the outside seating of 28, which is the outside patio seating, the main area and the rear area. Um, that is his basic layout. That's what he's going to be going with. 
Also, you'll notice on the plan there are two <coughs> spots designated A and B. A would be where the inside um, Sunday jazz brunch type entertainment would be, and in the back is where he would have the function hall entertainment. That's for the public entertainment portion. Um, the space is huge. It's 5,266 square feet. He's going to occupy the entire space. And as the ARB required, it was 57 parking places. We found all 57 within the legal perimeter of 1,000 square feet of the restaurant. And he actually picked up two extra spaces in the back as part of his lease to put um, employee cars or his own vehicle so they're not taking up town um, public spaces. Mr. O'Grin believes this is the Arlington Center is <coughs> essential and is it's the perfect place for this kind of restaurant. He wants it. a gastro pub. What's a gastro pub? Good food, craft beer, good drinks at a reasonable family friendly price. Um, he's been running a common ground in Austin for a couple of years. Couple of years. Yeah. In that time, he's gotten 22 different awards for his foods. Um, he's not just a burger joint going to come in. It's, it's good food. He's, he's proud of his food. That's one of his main focuses. Um, what is important to note is what he is not going to be. I don't know if you guys read the patch or any of these other internet blogs. You've heard all sorts of crazy things. They've been portraying him as a college bar, a beer hall, a um, drinking bar. It's none of these. He's not going to have a loud music in the front. He's not going to have drinking games in the front. It's going to be a common, everyday place for you and I to go get a little dinner, have a beer, see our friends in there, and socialize. In the front, in front he's not going to have any amplified music. So he's not going to have sound coming out the front of the place, magically going down Broadway and turning down the residential streets to bother people. It's going to be unamplified. It's just the normal background music. So I'm not sure how he, he would be bothering any of the neighbors. As we've discussed with the ARB, and I gave you the mitigation plan we submitted to them, He's taken great pains and steps to not bother the neighbors, um, to, the effect, it, to the extent that he's even going to provide the neighbors with contact information. So if they have a problem with his place, with the sound, they'll be able to call him directly. He doesn't want to have a, a crazy drinking place. That's not what he's after. Um, this would be a desirable for Arlington. It's a kind of, you know, more or less, it's a dead space in the center. That Gemma space has been abandoned for a while, even when it wasn't Gemma, it wasn't fully utilized. He wants to bring a vibrant cafe type atmosphere, hence the outside seating. Um, operable front windows so you can open it up, that people walking by can see in, they can become part of the um, atmosphere of the restaurant and become part of the um, center itself. I understand, Mr. Curl, that there are maybe some plans to redo that. And you might be on a board for a part of that group? Oh, no, that was, um, I, I was just checking with Mr. Kiro. Oh. He's the only selectman I checked with, with that there was um, a group of merchants down there that have combined, and initially this summer they yeah, were will. talking about having events every Friday night, mm -hmm. and well, they ended will. up just doing the block party, that's it. Bob, Bob wants to join in that group, and he actually would like to um, do any up upgrades with the town's permission and, and, and input to upgrade that Broadway Plaza area to enhance it and to bring life to that section of the center, which is sort of dead. Um, his function room in the back, um, he's never going to have a live band back there with ticket sales. That's been proposed, I understand, on some of the websites that he's going to be running rock and roll shows back there. It's not going to happen. It's going to be for me or you to rent out, have our family, friends, business meetings can go on in there. That sort of events, not rock and roll shows or anything of that nature. In the front, he's going to have a two, two to three piece, one, two, three piece jazz band on Sunday for his brunches. That's about all he's really en envisioning for the front. Um, like I said, no amplified music in the front. There'll be no speakers outside. It'll just be a open air um, cafe place. His hours of operation, he wants to just do 11 a.m. Monday through Friday to midnight. Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to midnight. Why midnight? Nothing else is open till midnight. Um, the kind of pub that he's envisioning would it, it lead itself to that kind of a crowd. It also, as the 
owner of the Regent Theater said he would welcome that um, because when his shows get out, often his client, his patrons have nowhere to go. It'd be perfect, the two of them <coughs> would blend together. Um, so he would have that kind of a crowd coming in, it would also give people somewhere to go after a show. What we basically have here is a great applicant with a proven track record. He's incident free with the ABCC and the city of Boston. Um, he owns and operates Common Ground in, in um, Alston, has had no incidences there at all. We've worked really hard with the ARB. We had two meetings, one of them was three hours long, the other one was two hours, the first one, at least. Um, we were been working with um, Mike, Mr. Burns, the city inspector of the building, come up with plans for the whole entire building in the back, entrances, everything. He's got a sound plan for building, for parking, the sound, the commuting of his employees, and the cooking exhaust ventilation. We've worked out a plan for that. What I have provided you with also is a 10-point alcohol service policy. Um, we took the initiative and did that and provided it to you just to be upfront that this is what he's going to do. And in that, you'll see that all of his employees are going to have tips training. Um, he'll do that as mandatory. All of the employees are going to have to sign off on that policy so they understand it. Um, <coughs> And he has his own rule of thumb in there. If they don't look as old as your parents, card them. Um, it's kind of a good rule of thumb because most people age 21, their parents should look like me. <laughs> old. Um, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked you to approve all five of Bob's licenses. If one of them's not properly advertised, we'll do that one later on down the road. Um, if you have any questions or Bob wants to say anything, oh, here's a picture of the outside. I don't know if you saw that. Um, the only difference is we have up lighting here, it's going to be down lighting. So it will be a aluminum sign here, black awning, and he's going to redo the front over here so it's wood with um, the accordion style windows. It's also showing what the outside seating would look like um, if that is granted by the board. I don't know if you want to take a peek at that. Thank you, John. I um, just want to say that. Um, I coming into this community hopefully as an asset. Uh, my mentor Jerry Quinn, who I worked with for 20 years, had taught me that if you work in a community and you make money out of the community, you need to give back to the community. And I believe that wholeheartedly and 100%. And when I come in, I expect to try making it as attractive as possible for the whole community and for everybody to be proud to actually bring their family and visitors to. And that's basically. And just so you know, the food is awesome. I have a chef from Colombia. He's really good with his meats and smoking, and we we like again. It's unbelievable. <laughs> he likes duck. <laughs> Who's up first? Do you want to do public input first, or you want us? Um, I'm happy if anyone does. Anyone want to jump in with any questions, or should we go to public I, input? Can I just do one yeah. just for clarification? Because yeah. I don't want to have the discussion if it's a moot point. Um, I had gotten a few emails and a couple of phone calls about not the outside seating but serving alcohol on the outside seating. Are you still asking for that? Because the reason I say that is I did ask Town Council Juliana Rice um, on that, and I don't know if you want to provide a brief explanation that you gave me. Yep, uh, currently the board's uh, liquor policy with respect to restaurants allows um, outside service of alcoholic beverages, um, but only on privately owned property, and that was an amendment that the board made uh, in September of 2012. Okay, but I don't know, I, you may have withdrawn that request for that reason. Um, or? I'll, I'll discuss with Bob during. Okay, uh, and that's it, I just or. wanted to, so it, it's something to be discussed. <clears throat> okay, uh, then are, is there any questions or, okay. Oh, I, I think I actually have one other oh, yep, uh, point of clarification yeah, sure. too. Yeah. Two. Um, one question, we're gonna see a paper here. Um, you, you did state in your mitigation plan that there are no plans for the karaoke at, uh, anymore. Um, first of all, I never advocated at karaoke. Okay. Um, the reason why I think it was advocated or someone brought it up is because our place in Austin has karaoke night. Okay. Again, it's the market can call for that. What I said was if you, someone privately books the back room and wants to bring a karaoke in for their 50th anniversary for their birthday party. I'm not objecting to it. That's up to them. Yeah. But I am not advocating to have a karaoke night. Well, the reason really I ask is is because on the public entertainment license, that 
there's the map and there's a handwritten note that says jazz duo trio and karaoke and oh, it's that, in the front it's in the front portion. that map is um i gave a new one to Marianne the other day that eliminated that karaoke okay. in the front of the hall yeah the karaoke is only supposed to be for the back if someone okay. books the room for and they want to bring karaoke in i'm not having karaoke up front and, and, and also i'm wondering are you looking for the same <clears throat> hours on the on the um sidewalk cafe as for the rest of the restaurant I actually have not thought about that because I make an assumption that after 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, most people wouldn't want to sit out in the patio. I, I assume that it would be closed down because yeah. sheer volume in general. But I, I honestly didn't think about that. Okay. That's all I had. Did I just okay. kind of clarify that? All right. So then why don't you two gentlemen step aside or take a seat or whatever. And so I, I'm guessing we have people who are here who, uh, who are neighbors or other residents who want to talk about the issue. Is there anyone here who wants to speak? Come on up. So the, what I'll ask is that you address any questions or comments to the board. And if there's a question that goes back to them, I'll be happy to relay it. And <coughs> if you could start by saying who you are and where you live, welcome. Thank you for coming. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, my name is Bob, <coughs> Bob Myrak, and I'm uh, the managing partner of the Legacy Apartments, which are just about 200 feet across the street on, on Mass Avenue. And the apartments are comprised, about 70% of them, of elderly, on the one hand, and young families on the other. At the redevelopment board hearing of July 19th, I presented the board a petition signed by over 80 tenants of ours who were in, <coughs> excuse me, in opposition to the common ground proposal. I should point out that in the board's decision, no reference was made to that <coughs> submission of these, these numbers, uh, the, the names. I assume that was an oversight on the board's part, but I'd like to put it on the record if I could. Thank you. More important than the, that oversight, I see by the board's, that is to say the redevelopment board's decision, that some, some steps, important steps have been taken to mitigate some of our concerns, and I appreciate that very much. I do have a couple of questions, though. First, about the hours of operation. Now, the redevelopment board, with no discussion of operating hours, has sanctioned the closing of 12 midnight, seven days a week. Let me repeat, 12 midnight, seven days a week. Now, no other restaurant in or near the center operates with such hours. Rather, every restaurant in Arlington Center closes at 10 o'clock during the week and 11 o'clock on the weekends. Now, if Common Ground is essentially a restaurant, and I believe they're representations, what justification is there for these midnight closings? And will all the other center restaurants be allowed to operate until midnight, because you're obviously setting a precedent? The only exception, as I understand, is the Monotomy Grill, which is the Monotomy Pub, which is on the Cambridge line, as you know, but that is not in a residential district at all. So that's one issue, namely the hours of operation. Secondly, noise abatement. Now we thank the redevelopment board for requiring that the function room be soundproofed, and as these gentlemen have said, and I believe them. But since, uh, and it's going to be soundproof because private parties can use that and they're going to bring their own amplification system. And moreover, we're pleased by special condition 4B, which states, and I quote, no amplified music, with the exception of standard restaurant background music, will be provided in the front main restaurant room. That raises a question. I don't want to sound like a Philadelphia lawyer on this, but I just wanted some clarification. Can private individuals who come and like this uh, orchestra or the three-piece band that they're going to have uh, on Sunday mornings, which is fine by us, will they bring in their own amplifiers in the front? We know that the company itself will not put any amplifiers there. Do you want me to pause you right there and get that answer, or do you want to keep going? Well, I, I, have, I have a couple of other questions. Okay. If that's all right, It's then, perfectly fine, if you prefer. So, so, so the question is, can the private individuals use amplifiers in the front room. Secondly, 
There's a uh, comment under uh, the um, EDR number 11 of the board. It states, acoustic performers may be featured by the applicant in the dining room. I don't know what an acoustic performer is, and I wondered if since you, you're the board that issues the entertainment license, you've had experience with this. Perhaps the gentleman can explain to us so that we can have that in writing of what an acoustic performer is. My third concern is parking. As you know, this raised a substantial concern at the board's hearing. A parking study was proposed. The petitioner was then asked to provide his own study. The end result was reliance on a previous parking study, which the board accepted. No wonder the one board member concluded that the issue of parking was no more than an educated guess, and it really is a problem. But I, I believe the other people here will speak about the uh, parking. Mr. Chairman, board members, we're unhappy about the empty storefronts in Arlington Center, and we're encouraged that the owners here have sought to mitigate their impact on noise and parking. We do appreciate that. Certainly, a, a, a pub will bring a new and needed attraction to the center. I hope, however, that your board, with its licensing jurisdiction, will properly set the hours of operation in line with current practice and clarify the issues about noise that I have raised. I say this because, as I said, we are, have, do have elderly, we do have a lot of children there, and the prospect, uh, the question was raised about the outside seating open till midnight. Um, the board, all the boards in town welcomed us and we were very happy to build our apartments there. We do have families and I just think <coughs> it's excessive to think that we would have noise up till midnight every night of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, do you, well, I'm gonna invite you. So you asked some questions that I think I are probably ab appropriately posed to Mr. Leone. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Leone, uh, first off, just in terms of the request for midnight hours, yes. I, if you don't mind, I wanna tackle these one at a time. Uh, what's the, why do you seek a midnight hour? What, what would be the effect of an earlier evening? Uh, yeah. Well, as, as I said before, there's no other venue in the center open till midnight. Mm -hmm. um, it would provide a destination for, not everyone goes to bed at 9, 10 o'clock like you and I. If people will be out at that hour. They can stay out if they wish beyond 11 o'clock. As the, reg the owner of the region came to the ARB, said his shows get out at 10, 30, 11 o'clock. This will provide those patrons a, a reason to stay in Arlington and to come to this restaurant and go ahead and have a late night meal as opposed to having to drive into Cambridge, into Davis Square. Uh, whether folks like it or not, Arlington is becoming a more vibrant community. Okay. We are stepping it up. So that's one of the reasons he wanted the 11 o'clock hour. Okay. He sees it as a real, frankly, business opportunity because no one else is open. Can, can I just make a clarification sure. on that or if town council? Um, we just had an applicant at our last meeting that asked till 1 a.m. I think it was Golden Taste on Medford Street and town council, and we do have several other um, Tiki Inn, a couple of the other uh, Asian restaurants in the Heights. Chris some exceptions too right. for special But I events. think, can you state what the... Um, right, for, so for a liquor license, the board's policy is that uh, any restaurant holding a liquor license can be open until midnight. And a less special, um, excuse me, I have a bit of a cold, but a less... You're sick um, of leaving us. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> um, unless there are special conditions placed by this board on, those li mm -hmm. on that license. So the other restaurants in the center that may close earlier do so out of their own choice. I, I do not believe that there's traditionally put any uh, hour of closing that's any earlier than the one stated here. Um, under town bylaws, retail food cannot be sold after 1 a.m. So I think the issue with the golden taste was they didn't have a liquor license. That, that's why they got 1 a.m. versus <clears throat> right. the 12 p.m. And there's probably six to eight. I can't, I, I just wanted to make that sure. correction. That's all. All right, cool. So question number two was um, I related to the so when you have the jazz or whatever coming in, the, uh, will they be permitted to use the amplification? No, that's acoustic is not amplified. So the acoustic yes. was the so next if, one. If, yeah, right. if um, it's not amplified, and we've stated it's not amplified, okay. it's in the um, ARB decision <coughs> requirements that it not be amplified. So, so, so it's not going to happen. I think you, I think that that's your. It, so acoustic is it doesn't have a plug. It is not amplified. Thank you. All right. Can we have, yep. I have one clarifying sure. question? 
Um, with so no microphones even, no, is that correct? Yeah. Over the yeah. I don't think no. Have to say okay. No, I just wanted to clarify yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I wouldn't think I have a singer with jazz. I mean, it's mostly <laughs> just all instrumental. Yeah. No, of course. But I know other brunches are, you know, kind of get evolved with time. Yeah. I think is. And can I just sort of yeah. maybe re-ask? Because it was the acoustic, but then there was the individual vendors, performers. Would they be allowed to come in with their own amplifications? No. Nope. Right, it's not a coup. That was two separate no questions. No amplifiers in front, period. Right, so no matter whether Bob that will be the system. It, oh, sorry. Whether Bob provides it or the performer provides it, no amps in the front. Okay. And I, it was two separate. Right. I knew acoustic as my well, daughter I'm does. I'm going to have to correct something on that. When we do have trivia, he will speak, and there will be speakers in the back, but it will be going through the house system, but it will be someone talking. Yeah, but the question is, you're controlling it. It's yes. not yes. like someone yes. can yes. come in and bring 10 no, more no. amps of sound. I wouldn't allow that. Okay. Uh, when, was your last question about parking? No, I, oh, I apologize. A, you said other people. That's a whole a different issue. You're right. So I apologize. What was your last question? I wrote it down incorrectly. The, it was acoustic. He had just the definition of music and parking study. No. Okay. no, the definition of what acoustics. Okay. Then I think we answered all, yeah. the, all the explicit questions anyway. So in other words, when when I I did a survey of the restaurants, I don't mean to drag this out, but. I did a survey of the restaurants in Arlington Center, and each one of them said, open uh, weeknights till 10, and on weekends till 11. And, but you're saying, Madam Council, that they are permitted to stay open till midnight? One. Uh, midnight if they have a liquor license, <coughs> one if they don't. And, and what to, if they don't? One if they don't. Oh, one I see. I mean, I, I don't know if any particular earlier hours were placed on any of those licenses. I'm not aware of it. But I what, know, I, yeah. what I'm assuming is that they are allowed to stay open later. They just choose not to. And there have been a couple occasions where we've made special exceptions for requests from restaurants for things like New Year's Eve and stuff like that, where we've permitted them past one. But those have been case-by-case -case bases. I see. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, any, who next would like to speak about from the public? If no one stands up, I'm going <laughs> to... There's way too many people here for no one else to want to speak. <laughs> Mr. Ruderman. Good evening, members of the board. Michael Ruderman. I uh, live on uh, Alton Street, around the corner from <coughs> uh, uh, Broadway Plaza, and I represent uh, Precinct 9 in town meeting, many of the restaurants in Arlington Center, as well as many of the neighbors that I've been speaking with uh, for the last couple of months about this issue. Uh, let me correct a couple of things. Um, not dead, it's not abandoned. There's been a vacant uh, restaurant space in Arlington Center uh, for, for a while. Uh, but I'm here to speak to a number of concerns that neighbors have that go beyond simply the existence of a restaurant. That being the difference between this restaurant as proposed and the restaurants that have been there for the past 19 years. Uh, Gamma, Crazy Carries, Panera, back to the first uh, uh, permit that the ARB allowed for conversion to, to uh, a restaurant establishment. Um, one is the outdoor seating. The plan, uh, the uh, picture that's been uh, presented to you here uh, eliminates one tree, one light pole, and the entire raised seating area in Broadway Plaza. You can like them or not like them, but that plan eliminates them visually. There is not room for those tables and chairs that are shown on that illustration, that are shown on the paperwork in front of you, they don't fit. So I'm going to ask you for three things tonight. I'm going to ask you one, no outdoor seating. For one, because it doesn't fit. That plan, the plan in front of you, that picture cannot be built as presented to you. Couldn't be built as presented to the ARB, but they didn't have jurisdiction either. Uh, it can't be built. Secondly, I echo Mr. Myrak's concerns about noise, especially in the later hours of the night, when because of the absence of surrounding noise, everything there, anything, any noise, sounds louder because it doesn't compete with, with traffic noise. So every, every conversation, every restaurant, uh, you know, the typical clinking of glasses and silverware, every conversation, every car door slamming, every car engine starting, the later it gets, the louder all of these noises appear to the neighborhood. Now, I live about 
three car lengths down Broadway and four car lengths up. And I can tell you the exact comings and goings of all of the businesses that front on Broadway. It's simple acoustics. The sound travels. I would consider not that this is an abandoned or a dead space, but it's a neighborhood restaurant. It's in a commercial block, uh, in a strip of commercial blocks. Right behind it is the neighborhood. So I ask you if, uh, if another restaurant surrounded by residences wanted to, be the one res wanted to be the one restaurant in town that was open till midnight, say, I don't know, hypothetically, Olivio's, do you think the sound would travel around the neighborhood, maybe, maybe go across the street, go up, the, up Winter Street? Do you think the residents would hear a pronounced and increased difference in the noise in the neighborhood as the hours went on and the only thing making noise was that restaurant on the corner? Yes. That's what they would hear. That's what they would perceive. So for the first request, no outdoor seating. The second request is that, is that we, we've gone around and around, you know, what's acoustic, what's, what's amplified. If you simply say no amplification, front or back, wherever it is in the restaurant, will be simple, will be done with the matter tonight. No amplification within the restaurant. That's my second request. Otherwise, you put yourselves into the position of the restaurant police. Because if someone says, hey, it's loud in there, and their windows are open, and the sound is welling out, and it's too loud, well, who's going to go find out you know, what's going on? That puts you in a very unenviable position of being the enforcers of, of what was promised and asserted in good faith and accepted here in good faith tonight. The third thing I'm going to ask you for is um, an 11 o'clock closing time with an asterisk. I'll explain. I'm afraid, and many of the residents in the neighborhood are afraid, that if there's one pouring establishment, as we used to call them growing up, in Arlington that's open till midnight, that will become Arlington's last call for anyone, anywhere, from any venue, not just the Regent. And, and, and tell me if, if I'm just too old here, but are, is Arlington really the sort of place where people go out to dinner at 11.15 or 11.30 at night? Uh, I, I don't know. I think that's bar hours. I think 11 p.m. to midnight is bar hours. And I'm afraid, and many of my uh, neighbors are afraid, that being the one singular place with a pouring license till midnight makes that Arlington's last call. And so not only will it have its own patronship, but it will have everybody else who wants one more and knows where they can get it because they're the one, they're the one and only place. And I'm afraid that not so much that you're going to have a parade out the door of other petitioners asking for the midnight hour, but maybe you will, and you, maybe you'll have to consider this you know, multiple times in, in short order, but I'm afraid that the 11 o'clock hour will become, will become Arlington's last call of choice, and our neighborhood will suffer all, all of the sounds and noises and impacts and parking and... Um, but let me give you the asterisk. We've heard a lot of... Um, well-minded and very community-minded assertions and promises, both in the ARB hearings, the five hours of that, and, and tonight. So I'm going to ask you, if you'd like to continue this experiment that, um, that your predecessors began some while ago in um, uh, having uh, pouring establishments in Arlington, I ask you to hold off on uh, the midnight uh, closing hour, save six months, Let's hold off on that until we've had uh, some experience, some observation. Let's see if the, um, the many assertions uh, that um, the proponents have made here bear out and that they are as good citizens and good community members and good for the neighborhood as they're promising uh, up and down that they will <coughs> be. Now, now, no restaurant's ever incident free. I've spoken with the community liaison uh, uh, officer of the Boston Police Department. He didn't say they were incident free down in Austin. He said, the usual stuff. I said, what does that mean? He said, not much. The usual stuff. Uh, the, the usual stuff is the drunken disorderly, the, the, the disruption, the disturbances of the peace, that sort of thing. But let's see. Let's see how this works. If you really want to grant a midnight liquor license in Arlington, the first, first explicit one ever, let's see how this works. Okay? So I'd like no outdoor seating because that plan is unbuildable on its face. I'd like no amplification anywhere, make it cut and dried and simple. 
and don't give a midnight closing hour until we've had some track record to see how this restaurant fits into the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ruderman. Who else would like to speak? Come on up. It would not be a bad idea if you want to speak next to for, perhaps stand underneath the monitor there and kind of form a line just so uh, we can move along. Uh, Welcome. Uh, my name is Jay Eberly. I live at 87 uh, Bartlett Avenue. My wife and I have lived in Arlington for 25 years now. Okay. Um, I guess I'm a little confused about the prior gentleman's uh, testimony. I was under the impression that all the restaurants that had liquor licenses currently in the downtown could stay open till midnight. And so there's really, at least to my mind, it didn't sound like there was anything new here that we don't already have. Uh, what I just wanted to talk about was that um, uh, over the last 25 years as, as a resident in Arlington, really have enjoyed seeing the changes that have taken place, the vibrance of the restaurant scene here, uh, of the art scene, of a whole number of different uh, things that have gone on. And um, um, if you look at my shoes, you'll see that they're a little unusual. It's because my wife and I walk everywhere. We moved to the downtown area so that we could walk everywhere to transportation, to restaurants, and so forth. Uh, we walked here tonight. And um, I think a lot of the people that will be taking advantage of this um, new venue will be neighborhood residents such as myself that will be walking. Frankly, I don't know the um, um, owner uh, of the proposed restaurant. I've never met him. Simply have heard some of the talk that's gone on in the, um, the news recently about noise, about uh, other issues. And while I am concerned with that, I sounds a lot of uh, a lot like some of the NIMBY concerns that uh, we've heard in the past about the bike path and so forth. And as long as um, uh, the owner uh, adheres to our laws and um, you know there's not a, a problem created, uh, then I don't see any reason to deny this. Um, looking for new activities in the downtown, and it, this sounds like a good one. So anyway. That's my testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on up. Welcome. My name is uh, Tess Hartwell, and um, I'm sorry. Tess, Tess Hartwell. I uh, I own a home in Arlington. Um, I own a business in Arlington. Um, I'm here tonight to speak in support of Common Grounds proposal, um, specifically the uh, patio seating. Um, I have two children, one who's just gone through the Arlington school system and one that's at the high school. Um, and I moved here about five years ago um, because I like the community. I thought it would be a good place to raise kids. Um, I still very much feel that way. And um, I think, uh, you know, I've spoken to a lot of our friends and neighbors who all feel like um, Arlington, you know, is in some ways missing that vibrancy that, um, that we'd like to see. Uh, I think that this proposal would open up the door for um, for that type of vibrancy and to help stimulate the, lo the uh, local economy. Um, and uh, I also think that as a bicycling community and a lot of people walk, as the previous gentleman said, uh, I think that that will alleviate a lot of the traffic situation, the parking situation um, that people are concerned over. Personally, I both bike and I drive, and um, when I've driven, I have never had a, a problem trying to get a parking spot, either in the evening or during the day. Um, so I think that this is exactly the kind of thing that Arlington needs to continue to uh, stimulate the local economy. So. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tess. Is there anyone else who wanted to speak? Uh, cease. Believe it or not, there isn't one. So the microphones we've got here, uh, they go out on the cable, yeah, for cable into the recording, but we don't actually have any speakers in this in this room. So unfortunately, sometimes the acoustics are a problem. There are a couple seats that are up front that are open, but because definitely when we have a soft-spoken speaker, it's definitely sometimes difficult for the audience. Thank you. Welcome. Hi. Hi, I'm Kathy Zollner, and I live on Russell Street from um, the parking lot behind the Arlington Catholic School. Um, my husband and I moved here as empty nesters from Belmont in 2005, and I have to say that we really love the community. 
Um, we weren't expecting Armstrong Ambulance to come into our neighborhood. We live on a wonderful historic street, so we've had to deal with that, but I think that's part, of, part and parcel of living where we live and being so close to the center, and so we've had to learn to adapt to that instead of complaining about it. Um, one of the things that I'm, I just found out about this restaurant today coming into town, and I'm also on the board of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce, and I am not speaking on behalf of the board, but I'm a business owner as well, and I'm very interested in businesses um, flourishing in Arlington and seeing successful business because it helps bring more people into the town and helps with the vitality and the economics of our, of our community. Um, I'm tired of going outside of town to find an outside cafe. Um, I'd love to be able to walk from my home, go up and have a drink, and I'm sure the chief of police who's left would have loved to have heard that too, <laughs> so that I could walk up, get a cocktail, and walk back home. And um, I too, I too like to exercise. Um, and I also, uh, the chamber itself, we have a really hard time finding venues that are large enough to accommodate larger group gatherings. So it would be wonderful to have a larger seating capacity restaurant in the town for, for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, and I know parking is an issue, but we also have difficulty with parking on our street from the Department of Social um, Services mm -hmm. and also from the students from the Arlington Catholic School. So I rec acknowledge that in general we have a parking issue. Um, I don't have a problem with them being open till midnight because I don't think it's, it sounds to me like it's not going to be the kind of establishment um, that would, it would pose a problem. Um, I too go to the Arlington Film Festival. It's a great festival, but you get late, out late at night and there's no place to go. So we've been having folks to our home afterwards for food and beverage. It would be really nice to be able to have a venue to go to. Um, the plaza, I, I, I guess this is up for discussion, but I'm very disappointed in the way the plaza has been kept up, and I feel like this would really boost the real estate um, and the appeal of the plaza, and I also like the interest that you have in investing into the plaza and the way that it looks. And if you go over to Union Square in Somerville, they have wonderful outdoor plazas, and those, a lot of those businesses in Union Square are but residential neighborhoods. So I don't have a problem with that. Um, I guess that's it, and I just thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you want to come? Look. Oh. Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Nancy Knopf. I live on at 87 Bartlett Ave, and along with my husband, we have lived here about 25 years. He spoke earlier. I won't take up too much time. I can tell by the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> And I just wanted to say that I was very excited when I had first read that the Gastropub was thinking of coming to Arlington. I thought it was a done deal. And then when I started hearing that it was very controversial, I decided that I wanted to come. And I don't know any, I don't know any of the players. <laughs> I just simply as a resident of Arlington, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to have. I like the idea of a pub, a public place where people can gather. I think it beats the heck out of the Arlington list. You know, let's get people face to face. Let's mm. get people out and in the community. Okay. I think it's a strong suit of Arlington. And when you have kids in the public schools or when you have dogs, you know, you're out and about and you get to see your neighbors. My kids are done. I don't have a dog anymore. <laughs> so Would this is like a one? new opportunity <laughs> to get to see my neighbors. And that is the strength of Arlington, I think, is the strength of the community. And so, keeping in mind that everything is done correctly and keeps everybody happy, I think it's a wonderful idea and I fully support it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Anybody else out there? Not seeing anyone. Mr. Greeley. So um, what I'd like to recommend, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that we separate these votes. Um, I personally think uh, everything is fine other than the outdoor seating and that is an issue that we would have to change our policy yeah. to allow that for the consumption of alcohol. I want to make it clear, though, we don't, we are not licensing pouring establishments. We are licensing restaurants where we allow them to serve alcohol. Where we have already allowed a license till midnight for the uh, Monotomy Village, it would be unfair to another business not to allow them that same opportunity. It's not the only place in town for someone to go for a last call. 
So I'm sure my other members of the board have a lot to say. I'd recommend we keep that the public seating one last, and I'd like to move approval on the common victualler's license subject to all conditions as set forth. Starting easy, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd take the first pitch, you know. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second from uh, Mrs. Mohan. I, I do, I, I think we do separately. Uh, just, uh, Ms. Rice, do you, are we going to be able to consider the awning? Uh, I say no, not because okay. it needs to be advertised, but because it's not on the agenda. Okay. Mr. Leone, I think I'm, I'm going to accept that recommendation, so we'll yeah. only talk about four. I've spoke to the board administrator. I'll <coughs> come back on the 30th after it can be. Okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, who wants to speak about common victualler or in general, I guess? Uh, Joe. Uh, I guess I'll just say just a few general remarks, too, and I, I agree with separating them, although there may be some problematic pieces in that. Um, I also think this is an asset to the town. I think that particularly that the uh, the function space, we hear this again and again, that there's just a lack of function space. We do the best we can here with town hall. I mean, <clears throat> certainly we, we, you know, Patsy Kramer does a great job here, but it's always booked. It's always booked, and beyond that, well, we have the Sons of Italy, we have the American Legion, are really the two most, most common ones, sometimes the, the KFC, most of which are surrounded by residential areas, too. Um, so, I mean, I think it's, it's a real benefit. I think um, it's been frustrating to me to see that, that space vacant, especially where it's in the heart of, um, uh, of town. And um, I think having an establishment that is complementary to the region, which I consider to be the anchor establishment for the center, um, in the evenings particularly, I think is, is uh, very important. The one question I'm, I'm going to have, and I support the common victualers license, the motion, um, I had asked the question about the hours that you're, you're seeking on the sidewalk cafe. And what I want to ask town council is where, where my thinking is, if we were, are to go forward with the outdoor seating, and I understand we're separating that, um, I probably won't be able to support the same hours for the outdoor seating as for the the um, the indoor establishment. And I'm wondering, do we have to set that limitation here in the common victualers license if we were to set a limitation on the, the hours of operation for outdoor seating, or do we have to set that um, in the out, in the sidewalk cafe permit as as a condition if we were to if it were the board's desire to do that? Well, I, I think you could, it probably makes sense to do it in the common Vic license if you do it on the, uh, otherwise, I mean, you could do it for the outdoor seating, but the outdoor seating really relates to placement of the furniture. So what you have is the placement of the furniture and by limiting the hours of the common Vic, you're saying service can't take place after a particular hour, so. Let, let me tell you what I'm trying to get at and uh, I don't know if my board, my colleagues will agree and, and uh, maybe you can tell us how we could do this. I mean, I, I agree with, with granting midnight op operation for the, uh, the restaurant and function hall. I only feel comfortable with uh, 10 o'clock for the outdoor seating portion. How, how would we do that? Would we do that in this motion or in the outdoor seating motion? This is the common Vic? Yep. I would do it in this one because okay. at the current time, I think you're not going to entertain allowing service of alcoholic beverages on the plaza. Correct. Because under the current policy, I can't, can't count to three on that now. <laughs> right. So I would do it on the common vic. I would say for the common vic, the hours are till midnight, except for the outdoor seating portion. Then the hours are only till ten, or whatever the board decides to vote. His feelings. Well, just, yeah. uh, just a point of clarification. Yeah. Uh, what this argues for is we really should take up the outdoor seating and, and approve it or deny it right now. Mm. You know that settles yeah. your issue. Okay. Maybe. Uh, let's let's go. Let's okay, go around right, and then we'll right, let's go. No, but, uh, no, but I think it's exactly. a good advice, Mr. Greeley. Do, um, do you guys want the outdoor seating if you can't serve alcohol out there? I would say yes, because there are some, some people who would prefer to sit outside as more of a cafe to our windows. It's like an extens extension of it to make it a better feel and atmosphere. Prefer to have the alcohol, but I mean. Um, it's one of no, yeah. I, um, and I, I um, and just on this portion of it, I, um, I would be open to having you know a more in-depth policy discussion on the serving of alcohol outdoors. Um, I don't think this is the right time for it. Okay. Um, but um, the, so that's how I feel about the outdoor seating. 
All right, so then I think, so I feel like we, we have general support for the common VIC. We just have to figure out the language. So let's put that motion to the side for the moment and um, let's talk about outdoor seating. And if anyone wants to make a motion, that's fine. But if we don't want to and we just want to talk about it, that's fine with okay. me too. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes. 10, 8, 10 p.m. is fine for the outdoor seating. If you okay. Want, we'll, Thank whatever you, you yeah, want to do. I wasn't thinking about that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question for the applicant about the outdoor seating. So I'm uh, looking at the physical layout and looking at the plan. That was the architect just throwing it down. We'll, yeah. uh, and because we were trying to decide whether it should be up against the building, we were trying to figure out the pathway. So we don't actually have a real seating plan. In front right. Of us and and I'm good at revisiting this in three months from now when I have a better as understanding of what's going on. Is, so yeah, Does it, is there anyone, so my thoughts on, so here's what I suggest. I don't think anyone's going to, we're not about to approve outdoor seating, we don't have a plan. But let's give them the benefit of a discussion about things that we think are important and let, so that to make the plan that comes in a better one. Is that okay? Uh, Ms. Greeley. Can I, can I just, a uh, clarification of what you just said. When do you hope to start, uh, when would you hope to open? God I would willing. hope to open based on it either by December or January 1st. Okay. And that's why I was saying I would be visited once I got so in sorry. addressed and then see more about the outdoor area. So that's what I'm saying. Are you willing to delay applying for the outdoor seating until yes. after you open? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's so, reasonable. That well, so let's just give it a general, quick general discussion. Do you have any comments? Mrs. Mahan, did you have a, a um, I, I want to agree with the, Mr. Kira. I'm not sure who made that. Right now, our bylaw says you can only s serve alcohol on private property. And I think tonight's meeting, we need to have a future meeting where we discuss it, that if we want to make a change to that. Is it a bylaw? Yeah. yeah. It's the alcohol policy. Alcohol policy. But not bylaw. It's right. okay. Our, our, our policy. policy. Yeah. Um, so, and, and where the outdoor seating still isn't really cemented down, um, I would be leaning towards what Mr. Kiro had suggested, um, 12 a.m. for the restaurant and 10 p.m. for outside. And I would note we do have... Um, and maybe maybe to some of the neighbors, Monotomy Tavern and Grill, when East Arlington was first developed, and I know I was involved with the East Arlington Good Neighbor Committee, there were lots of concerns, especially with all these restaurants coming. And I think a testament, because they're sort of in the later stages in East Arlington with restaurants and other businesses and developments, that when Monotomy Tavern and Grill came in, and you do have a lot of residences. I know the Bartashes and everybody on Cottage Ave and Teal Street and people who live on Mass Ave. Um, and there's a historic home directly across from that. Um, one of the things that really worked that I think helped the neighbors down there, which, which is brand new here, is they've gotten used to, they see the benefit of having a lively capital square, they call it, as well as, and I think I heard this, but I just want to follow up on two um, items I think you referenced that you were committing to or exploring. Um, Monotomy ta Tavern and Grill and other establishments, but they are open until midnight. They have outside, outdoor seating, but it's... I shouldn't say their private property, it's the owner's private property that they lease. Um, they ha have contact people, they're really good about you know, getting in with the neighbors. And I think I also heard you either were talking about joining the chamber and or the Broadway Plaza business group. I, I'm not committing you, it's not no, a no, 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 I'll commit myself, don't <laughs> worry about it. No, I, I, I plan on getting involved into the community as much as I possibly can. Um, like I, I already talked to the horticulture about the the potted areas, I want to take that over and beautify it and spend my money on it because I want it to look nicer than when you look at the center, you go, wow, it looks nice, let's go check it out. I'm all about making it look nicer. I've heard uh, owner of the shop over this complaining about how dirty it is. I'm like, well then do something about it. It's your mm -hmm. place, clean it up. And that's how I was taught to do. And that's what I do when I come in. I make, try to make it as best as possible with the community help and stuff. And I just want to add, in terms of my family experience, which they have no vested interest whatsoever, with the, the Nocera family with the chateaus. They've gone into similar circumstances with chateaus and Noceras. And sometimes when it's a brand new idea, in, well, not a brand new idea, but a brand new idea for that area, the same concerns arise. And I think the big thing that makes it work is that the owner and or his designee really has something established and gets the word out and anticipates everything beforehand. And I think I'm seeing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any comments on outdoor stuff briefly? Well, I just want to clarify, the Monotomy Grill, where we have allowed it, you have to enter the restaurant. Mm -hmm. You cannot enter it from the sidewalk. That's a big difference. That, that's, that's obviously the issue here. But I, mean, I think it's very, you know, uh, 
very nice that they're willing to wait and say, look, you know, give us, let us open and get it going and everything, and we'll, re we'll revisit, which we need to revisit, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so. uh, what we need to do what we can to increase and help foot traffic while uh, being concerned and fair to the neighbors. I mean, it's... I'll say, uh, so my thoughts on the plane was, I, I had real questions, even beyond the physical stuff, just the number of seats and the space available, the density was, seemed, I didn't, I don't think, I couldn't, be careful with the density is my feedback on that. And um, I would definitely, uh, I, I, when, I lost this vote last year, but you know, this year and next year is a new year. Uh, having, uh, I'm okay with having alcohol on the sidewalk in, a, in the right and the controlled ways. And I point to some examples in Cambridge that are, and they're pulling it off and doing it pretty smart. Mm -hmm. It's not for everyone, it's not for every location, but I don't like that we ban it. But we don't have to, we don't, that's we don't my, allow it, that's, that's a nice way. Exactly, so well, that's my, that's right my opening salvo for a fight that we're not fighting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> 25 years I've been fighting for alcohol in this town. <laughs> All right, so I think then we're gonna, um, we're gonna call the outside seating, uh, I'm, I think we should call it withdrawn, and yeah. we'll revisit when it comes back. Early so, next year. Okay. <laughs> so now we have three, the common vic, the all alcohol, and the public entertainment. So I think let's come back to the common vic from, and put Mr. Greeley's motion back on the table. Okay. Steve. Um, one, potentially two questions. Um, Looking at the um, the plans here, the back door outside of the door outside of the back room, the yes. event room, is that going to be open for patrons to you know no, go? That, not that at all, works. correct? That is um, emergency, okay. and one of there's two back doors actually, one in the function hall, which will be an emergency exit, which empties out onto a. Um, well, you'd have to look at Google Earth. Like an alley, right? It's like, well, it's a big area. You can mm. spin a dump truck around back there, but that goes on to an alley, which will strictly be used for pickup and deliveries and emergency patron entranceway out of the building onto the public way. So no, that, no one will be out there. That's good. Yeah, I didn't want it to be a place where, you know, people that no, were inside no the party would be, be um, they don't want going be back outside. There. Um, and I also, you know, after hearing uh, Mr. Myrax, some of his concerns for his residents, potentially, um, you know, you, I, I'm completely support having um, your place open till midnight, maybe shutting the windows um, around 10 o'clock, say, just to, you know, quiet it down a little bit for, and maybe, that, I think that might be a good compromise to work with the neighbors. In Boston, it's 11 o'clock, just because okay. uh, it's the temperature, it's, I, and I, I would agree to 11 o'clock because it's a bit too late anyway at that time. Okay. No, but I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're not, but we're not in, you know, Boston. No, and th we're, this is a learning curve for the no. town too. And I think, you know, I think we're really trying to work through it. I think that might be a good compromise that you and the, you know, surrounding community, you know, a good way to start out a positive relationship. Um, if you'd consider that. Yeah, again, those windows will not be open eight, or eight months of the year. Yeah, no, I, know. I, I completely season, understand so. that, John. Yeah. Um, but I think that's definitely something to consider, and I hope you'd support that. And um, I, I really do appreciate all that you're planning on doing for the town. Um, I like that you're getting involved um, right off the bat. And I think, um, you know, this was a very, you know, it was an excellent packet that you provided and with a lot of information. So um, I thank you for that. Mrs. Mahan? If I could, um, I know, again, from my family as well as we have this with a few restaurants in East Arlington like Olivio's, um, and I'm not sure what Monotomy, where their back door and where their workers are, um, and also the restaurants Punjab, um, because there's residents right there, even though there's a pocket. <coughs> um, they've all, when complaints have come in, I'm trying to be pro proactive that, you know, people are working till 11 midnight, and you know, when you're working late at night, to you it's nine o'clock at night, um, and you know, lots of times there's lots of dumping and, and you know, doors and every door and window open open in what, what the neighbors have asked for and other restaurants have done is has sort of trained their employees that, you know, even though we're back here at 11, 12 midnight, we have to kind of go, I don't want to say a quiet voice, but you've been in the restaurant business. Right. I think you know what I'm referencing. I know there's different. Yeah. Could you speak to that? Um, well, it's like I do in Austin. I, my employees, I have certain times when it's time for cleaning, 
you, uh, things get dumped and you can just basically they're, they're going to know not to go out and they just throwing things against the wall right. and in reference to people coming out and stuff there's a timeline because if i see people out at certain times what are you doing we only have certain breaks during certain times and they can go to the employee area if they're smoking then they they quick cigarette break outside yes and keep it quiet but um, i mean like, like nobody's the main, like, yeah. in reference to cleaning and stuff it's all done within a, a timeline at the end of the night you might well have a trash that needs to be dumped in the middle of a shift, but it's not going to be Continuous. throwing That's what anything. Yes. Yeah, no, it's it's all done in shifts. Okay. We try conserving as much and try as little trash as possible. Because if you look at our food, we don't throw really any food away. It, most of everybody eats everything or takes it home. So we only thing we have is maybe some um, some wrappers or something from opening containers or something up. Okay. Usually. Okay. And one of our um, conditions on the ARB special permit is the dumpsters have to have plastic lids so they won't be those big old metal ones banging and waking everybody up at all hours. It'll be quiet. And just so you know, I don't know how these people have been doing um, some of the deliveries in business, but you can dictate to the people who are doing deliveries and pickups and everything what time they're going to come. And I dictate 100% because I like to see, make sure everybody's aware of what's going on. Joe? One thing I wanted to uh, reference was the the uh, parking, and uh, you know I appreciate the mitigation measures here. I, I think it's important to keep um, stressing that that the Russell Commons and, and railroad are the places to go. I also think at the same time that we have a responsibility. I think we we had a discussion about the um, center parking um, uh, situation and the the study that was undertaken. There were some short term measures that we were looking at to improve the signage in the. Russell Commons lot to make clear that it's three hour limits during the day and that it's free at night, which I, I know this is something I've heard from some of the businesses operating at, <coughs> uh, at, at, at night. And I was wondering if the manager might have any update on, on, on what we had discussed. So I, I recently spoke with Mike Rademacher at Public Works and he's working with Dan Warren to create a decal to clarify the two hour versus three hour parking issue. And he's still having discussions uh, about creating some directional signage to get people in, uh, to improve the way people find uh, the town's parking lot. So we've, we've not implemented those short-term fixes yet, but we are working towards them. Thank you. I, I think it's important, I mean, because I've, I've heard it from the center merchants, and I think if we're, you know, on a road to approving, you know, an establishment like, like this where we, we have had some parking issues flagged, I think it's, it's doubly important now that we make sure that the parking resources we do have there are, are clearly marked and uh, accessible because they really aren't that far away from, from the establishment. Okay. Uh, so my comment is on the Common Vic. I like the restaurant idea. I think it's very neat. I, I look forward to it a, a lot. I think it's, I think it's going to be a really enjoyable place, and I, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I will definitely say that I think that Steve's on the right track with talking about the windows closing at 10. Uh, the, the Thirsty Scholar on Hampshire Street, I'm pretty sure they close at 10, for, and they do it for the exact same reason. I know that I've been a patron there enjoying the windows and they close the windows and I'm like, keep them open, it's nice. Yeah. And they're like, no, the neighbors don't think they're nice. So I, I, I think Steve's really on the right track and I think you should yeah. strongly consider that. I'm not ready to make it a condition, but um, it would be one of the first things that I would that I would think about. All right. Uh, ready to vote on yeah. that? Is there any, are we ready to vote on the Common Vic? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, five Move zero. approval on the all alcohol subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. Second for Mr. Byrne. Any discussion on the all alcohol? I, I just want to clarify, is this the last one we'll be giving out yes. unless we revisit the issue? Yeah. I'm not saying that's an issue. I just want to make it sure that's before point, us. Yeah. So we may have a, an alcohol agenda item yeah. policy discussion later. Okay. Yeah. All set. Any other discussion on the board on the all alcohol? Was there a second? Yes, Mr. Byrne. Second. Okay. Um, my comment is the exact same one that I gave the previous uh, so, uh, applicant who you just saw. We had three violations two years ago. We had six violations last year. It's too many. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely understand that you've got a million things in the air and you're losing money until you actually get people coming in and paying. And I completely understand that that is incredibly stressful. But build a system such that it's, it lasts and that you train and you retrain and you teach people because it'll really be unpleasant if we have to come back and talk about um, you as one of the three or the six or hopefully next year, zero. Yes. Uh, I just have one yes. thing to yes. add on to that. I think that, you know, we heard tonight from some uh, residents that, you know, owning the, or an establishment in Brighton might 
not be a good thing, and they might bring that to Arlington. But on the other side of it, I think that might be beneficial in that they, um, as we've heard, they are responsible there. And they know, um, you know, I think that having that be a vital part of their business somewhere else will only benefit Arlington when it comes to, you know, safety. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Uh, move, move approval on public entertainment for, uh, for no outdoor amplification, acoustic music within the restaurant, and ampli amplification allowed as necessary in the uh, function hall. As provided by the owner. Well, no, if a band comes in. Yeah, I'm not. I might. Oh, you're not? Oh, okay. It's like, you might have weddings and stuff there, right? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. so okay. that would be typical of a function hall. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mrs. And Mahan I, wins. <laughs> uh, Joe, you look like you have. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm absolutely in line with the goal of the no amplification in the, in the, in the front. I'm just trying to work through in my head what, what we've been presented and how that will actually work in, in practice. You know, a jazz duo or a trio. I mean, typically there's a piano. Are you going to have a piano on the, an acoustic piano on the premises, or are you going to be well, they would electric? Have, they would have a keyboard. keyboard. Which is technically is a form of amplification. So I think uh, yeah, that's why I'm just I'm afraid of us tying ourselves in knots in a, in a way <laughs> that will make it unworkable. Uh, it how can we easy. how can we better define that so that it's not um, loud amplification? Yeah. If, yeah. if you I mean, say a, really a microphone in a restaurant, I mean, how are we really yeah. against this myself? I mean, I, I would say do it at Trist, although I don't think they have a microphone. They, they, uh, there's a number of places I've been in Arlington that has jazz bands and stuff. But they do have electric piano. So let me let me no, I don't try to split the hair this way and say, um, instrument only without addition, like without additional amplification. And so thereby you're saying like you've got if you've got a and admittedly, it's a fine. We can't. You're right. We're not going to write ourselves watertight, but that's a, yeah. perhaps a share, shade better. I don't know. I don't care. I could. Well, we'll I want to make sure we give proper latitude without. without uh, May I ask? Yeah. Uh, you, you seem pretty sharp. You, you already have a group of acts, you know, that are coming in that you would use for like a brunch? Yeah, it would be like a, a violin, it would be maybe electric uh, piano, yeah. or, or, or just an uh, acoustic guitar, non amplification. Um, basically, that's the style that you have. You might get a harp, and they don't have any amplifications. I get, just to put it on the table, one solution might be that we um, support Mr. Greeley's motion, and should the situation arise, we can bring them right back in yep. um, yeah. immediately and you know, revoke some part or all of um, the permission. I think what Joe's concerned mm -hmm. is, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that that piano, like an electric piano, would violate the terms that Mr. Greeley has proposed. Right. Because it plugs in basically. And it it's seems like it would be a pretty common instrument. See, I have a bias because my daughter does like, does acoustical and she yeah. does guitar and she does the keyboard and it, you, you really can't jack it up on that. But I'll let you, <laughs> I'll let you guys. I, I want to disclose that. Can we say? <laughs> can we change uh, to? Can we say no amplification beyond the instrument itself in replace of the no amplification and then just say we all know what we're talking about and hope it's good enough. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That we can say that. You can just tell me you still want to open this place up. Well, I, guess. <laughs> I wasn't planning on having any entertainment in the front anyway, except for yeah. trivia. So. Yeah. 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 Okay. Everyone happy with that? Yeah. I think any further that. discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> any opposed? Five zero. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you very and much. Outdoor seating. So we'll, day. yeah, we'll see the awning when we have it. Sorry, we don't have it there. And outdoor seating. Let's talk about it later. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We need a garage on Russell Common. And a garage. It being 9 o'clock, I'm going to call a five-minute uh, recess. Okay. It is, we'll be back at 9.05. Oh, I'm going to give my envelope.
Thank you, everybody, for bringing us back to order. Next up, licenses and permits. Uh, request for a secondhand dealer license. Barbara Molly Marley doing business as Buzzy's Bazaar. Hi. Welcome. Hi. I assume you're Ms. Marley. Yes. I kind of like to think of it more in a more cachet kind of terms as taking things from people that no longer want them and giving them to people who want to love them now. It's mm -hmm. kind of changed the whole idea that it being secondhand. I think people like things that have some age to them and some interest. I was a former uh, high school English and history both in Stoneham and in Lexington, and I started collecting as a child. So I was always interested in everything that people didn't want anymore and why, and I would try to restore it. And I was a docent for the Art Deco Committee and helped Barbara Capitan build uh, South Beach as to what it is today. And I had a lot to do with lecturing for the Art Deco Committee and trying to inculcate in people an interest in all kinds of things. And I, I feel that, you know, it really is the future of, of collecting and saving things, buying a bureau that somebody else doesn't want or somebody doesn't need anymore. Would you believe that back until May, we were so rude as to call them junk dealers? It was terrible. I know. <laughs> all right. Because it really isn't. Okay. It's wonderful things. And all right. It's discovery, mm -hmm. it's like being a treasure. So thank you, we thank you for coming. We've uh, read your applications. Um, any questions or a motion from the board? Mr. Greeley. Uh, move approval subject to uh, all conditions as set forth. Is there a second? Uh, se second. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. So, so coming from uh, South Beach, how does one pick Arlington for a business? I think it's a wonderful demographic. I think it's a wonderful place. Your, your, your Arlington is a wonderful town, and um, I've been involved with Arlington for years, years ago with Arrow Pontiac. I worked there for five years, and um, I, I love being there, and I love being back there. And I think it's close to Cambridge and Medford. You meet all kinds of people. There's so many walkers and bicyclists and, and people that just come by and say hello. And the dog park is so fantastic because everybody has a dog and I'm a, a big dog person. So, I mean. Well, thank you for choosing Arlington. Move approval. Yes, indeed. Further questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Welcome to Arlington. Good luck. Best of luck. I'll be in. <coughs> Next up, Citizens <laughs> Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to the Citizens Open Forum? Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for the time. I'll be brief. Uh, Paolo Marinelli, Precinct 2. Thank you. Uh, it's past my bedtime, so three minutes is a good idea. Um, <laughs> It's a near and dear issue to my heart, which is uh, roadway safety issues. And uh, I haven't stood before you in probably three years now, but it was just brought to my attention the other night that um, you're going to be doing some repaving up in Arlington Heights. And uh, there's some pedestrian crossings up there that were installed about 14, 15 years ago. Uh, at the cost of in excess of $10,000 a piece. And I've actually used some examples of those crossings uh, in a little piece I did on Beacon Hill last year, trying to uh, get the Commonwealth to adopt the international crosswalk design that we see in this photo, which dates back to the late 40s in Great Britain. Uh, Arlington adopted this design to go forward with this mm -hmm. back in 01. I think it was Warren Article number 41. Um, and I was also under the impression that uh, going forward in the Heights, we realized that the brick pedestrian crossings up there, I think there's about nine of them, uh, were crumbling, were rather invisible to oncoming motorists. That's really the objective of a pedestrian crossing. Um, anybody with any type of mobility impairment is obviously not a fan of it seniors community, disability community. And uh, 
I stayed up past my bedtime tonight to, to appeal to you as the, um, uh, the way I understood it as um, the party that's responsible for traffic decisions in this city or town. This paving project's supposed to happen next week and I was made aware that they're gonna to attempt to preserve some of these invisible crossings. And um, I got a picture of one of these crumbling ones for you that I actually used on Beacon Hill to say, look, chapter 90 monies across the Commonwealth are being used for roadway initiatives and pedestrian crossings. And I urge you, if, if we're gonna be using chapter 90 monies, let's make them as visible and as safe as possible to oncoming motorists. I've got a series of these from 100, 200, and 300 feet, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hand these to Adam, and as well as a copy to you, the selectman, and you can see how they just don't work. Yet, if you were to put these down in thermoplastic, they can be seen from easily 300 feet if done properly. Typically, a cost of one of those is less than $500, as opposed to close to 10 grand. Now, I don't know the scope of the project and the heights, the paving project. Uh, I got wind that <coughs> maybe uh, NSTAR was involved with it. I don't know if they're paying for the project, but it seemed like the time is the roads being ripped up to go forward and do this properly. Um, I did take a couple of notes. I will be very brief. We know these work. Well, first, let me hand these out. We got like a minute left. <laughs> we know they work, they're inexpensive. We'd like to see consistency and clearly the primary objective of these crossings is safety. So I think if you looked at the condition of those, if that was concrete, <clears throat> there would be no question. You'd tell the contractor, you gotta rip this up and do it right. Yet for some reason we turn a blind eye to this. So I'm begging you for your consideration to make this change in the next week before this happens. Um, you have the authority to do that. I'd love you to discuss it tonight. I realize it's on the Citizens Open Forum. Um, and I can answer any questions you might have. So. Thank you. Oops, I spot, sorry. Uh, and just one other thing, there were two other things I would like to ask you to pass along to TAC, and I can do that afterwards if you'd like. I'm sorry, say it again? Uh, there were two things I'd like you to pass along to TAC to have them put on their agenda. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you want to mention them really sure. briefly? Sure. One of them is, was actually uh, brought to their attention twice in the last decade, and unfortunately it's such a big project, it keeps getting shuffled to the bottom of their deck. And the last time I inquired about it, they said they couldn't even find it. However, uh, it's what I consider the worst crossing in this municipality. And it's one of the reasons I got involved in this in the first place. And it's the crossing at Park Ave, Wollaston, and Paul Revere that I asked that that be placed back on their agenda and a working group be established. Um, that's such a wide, dangerous place. It's horrible for all roadway users. What's the other one? Uh, the third one is um, they recently re repaved uh, Mystic Valley Parkway in the last 12 months. They have two non-mechanized pedestrian crossings, one at Palma and one at Arizona. Unfortunately, DOT or DCR did not put that international design in. And I would ask that we give DCR or DOT uh, a nudge as well as the pedestrian crossing on the Route 2 access road by the pedestrian bridge. Okay. So. Uh, do you mind scribbling those down and passing those to Marie so I can follow up with them? Sure. Thank you. Uh, so I'm afraid that we, are, I, because it's Susan's open forum, we can't discuss it or act on it. It hasn't been pre-announced and so on and so forth. How, it, the, however, the person you really needed to hear, so the, who needed to hear this was the town manager, and he heard you. And so uh, I'm gonna, we'll leave it in his hands. Mrs. Mahan? Just one clarification. When the 01 Board of Selectmen was sitting here, myself and Mr. Greeley included, but I'm speaking from my memory, not. Um, there was, when TAC was originally formed, Mr. Hurd was involved with that. Um, that's when the issue of international crosswalks came before us. Um, the then board adopted a policy with the then town manager and DPW director that going forward in the future, we would 
A, look at where we could do thermoplastic um, crosswalks. And I haven't really seen that been implemented recently. And I think it's just because of the transition. And I think. Mr. Marinelli and Paulo for bringing that back before us, as well as it was discussed about the brick sidewalks and, you know, trying to move away from them. And my only personal concern is we seem to be retaining them all. And I know from DPW that when we have a winter like we had last year, those things get ripped up like crazy. And there's big, huge craters that are just not efficient. So as the chair said, um, the town manager heard that. I'd really like to see some follow through on this because I think it's an easy fix. But so may I, uh, please, Mr. Chair? So um, w what you heard is uh, is correct. It's a National Grid who had been doing work for the past two construction seasons on both sides of the road is actually going to be starting paving from the bus barn all the way down to Richardson on Mass Ave. So it's not it's not the town's contractor. It's uh, National Grid's contractor coming in and doing that paving. Uh, we've been sort of hammering on them for a while to do that. Uh, and while we've been doing that, uh, Mike Rademacher and myself have had probably three to four conversations about what are we going to do with those crosswalks. Uh, for a number of reasons, uh, you can see, in, even in some of the photos you passed around, there is a trench from the pipes that cuts across some of the crosswalks. So there was the issue of what would we replace it with? And then there was the issue of, all right, so if we're not going to do a brick, a brick crosswalk, how is the, the business district going to feel about that from sort of the, you know, Safety side aside, the community <coughs> development and sort of district planning side of things. But I, th I think where we are right now is the cheapest fix for National Grid is to just put cobble back in uh, where those patches are. But I'm happy to have a conversation before they start work and see uh, what we can do. If I could add to that, I know that uh, a few years ago when this came up at the TAC meetings, uh, I was led to believe that going forward up there, as those projects went forward, that those brick pe pedestrian crossings would be removed because they realized, number one, they weren't cost effective. They were basically invisible to oncoming motorists. They were crumbling. And as far back as uh, over 10 years ago, uh, and if you look back in TAC notes, you'll see that um, they were looking for ways to make those more visible to oncoming motorists. So one of the issues was just to change the yellow signs on the sides. Those were never done. Those were supposed to be changed to fluorescent yellow. But so this is on tax radar, and, and I believe they were surprised that mm -hmm. these were going to be preserved. So uh, tax meeting this week, I don't know if it's something that you can direct TAC to discuss, and perhaps we can discuss this this week before this happens next week. Okay, thank you. You know, I'm, I'm very happy to follow right. up on it. Thank you. Anything else? No. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else who's here for Citizens Open Forum? Nope. <laughs> I have that one, two, no. Negative. <laughs> Carol, uh, we were, next up is the discussion of the master plan progress. Carol Klasky, director. Uh, thank you very much. I want to especially thank you for the time you've already contributed to the master plan process, um, especially with the interviews, the stakeholder interviews with the consultant. And I want to thank Mr. Byrne for serving as liaison to this um, board uh, on the master plan advisory committee. Um, you received a memorandum in your packet um, telling you a little bit about the, the, the interest at this point is as the Master Plan Advisory Committee is working with the consultant right now to on a draft vision statement and draft goals for the Master Plan, it's important at this point to elicit any official agenda the board has for a Master Plan. It's not required, but at the same time, we don't want to overlook any official objective this board has or the redevelopment board has or any other key board. Um, this is the time to gather that. You may not have considered whether you have an official board objective or agenda for the master plan, and that's fine if, if, if this board does not. But of course you can recognize that it's important that if, you, if the board does have, it's, it's, it's appropriate at this point to consider that. So I'd like you to give it some thought. I would be happy to provide you with the drafts, knowing that they're going to change. It, they're uh, a work in progress. The Master Plan Advisory Committee will be working on them, so they may change. But having the vision statement and the draft goals now might help you consider whether you want to issue uh, uh, an agenda and put it into the mix. Uh, 
I can come back at, at the, uh, a meeting, I think you meet again on the 23rd, if that's an appropriate time. So give it some thought. I'll provide through the town manager uh, or through the Board of Selectmen's office uh, the draft vision statement and draft goals now so you can see what's been shaping up. If you feel comfortable with that, that's perfectly adequate. But if you've held a uh, like a latent agenda that you want to see realized through the master plan, now is the time to try to articulate and determine if the board, if, if, it's, if, if it's a jointly held objective of the board as a body. Any comments? So my thoughts uh, just off the top, so having not participated not as much as Mr. Byrne, but at a number of the meetings is that I felt like the direction and the concepts that are being talked about are the, the right ones. And uh, so I think a draft would really help me to, to give me something concrete that if I feel like I need. Because for instance, if you, the master plan committee decided that parking was not in the purview and you just didn't want to talk about it at all, I'd be like, no, I really think you should talk about parking some. But, I've, but you've been talking about parking and I don't see you, you stop, stopping it. Mm -hmm. So I think it, for me personally, a draft would be very helpful just to, so that I know. But I can certainly say that everything that I've seen, I feel like you're covering the important things already. Okay. Is there any further? No, I, I just feel uh, I'd be glad to look at the vision and, and the draft. But uh, I feel the interview, anything I had to say, I was listened to. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's been included or rejected at this point. Anyhow, <laughs> I didn't really have any. Specific. I'm sure they took everything. No, I didn't have any specific recommendations. Anyhow, but I'm glad she's coming back and that we can mm -hmm. look over those materials. Uh, uh, thank you, and Kevin, don't worry, I said, um, I advised them at the last meeting not to listen to one thing you said, so I think we're going in the right direction. Um, um, I'm kidding, obviously. Um, <laughs> Second. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, Move, we adjourn. <laughs> but um, no, I, uh, I couldn't be uh, happier with how open this process was. I, um, if you had an opinion, you were listened to, and you had ample opportunity um, to be involved, and that's uh, a testament to Carol and the team of advisors that um, are working on this, and also to the members of the committee. They, um, they're working quite hard on this. They are logging quite a few hours, um, and I'd like to thank them as well, and um, it's been a great process to be involved in thus far. Thank you. Quick consensus a poll of the board is there anyone who has something that they have in the back of their mind that they so uh, let's assume we're going to get a draft from carol assuming the draft is, is there anyone who says yeah i know that i suspect there's something i'm going to want to talk about Not me. no, no. i'm going to want to see what's the there and, and but, see if there's something okay. that triggers something okay. that, is that what you need i to don't hear? good that's okay. perfect sure all right anything else i think we're all set then thank you very much thank, thank you, you carol. all right next up is <clears throat> Talking about the Alewife Greenway. Oh no, oh, sorry, no, sorry. Yep, yep, I checked something off prematurely. Democratic appointee of the uh, Board of Registrar. So, unfortunately, one of our members of the Board of Registrars passed away, and that leaves a vacancy. And so, the board, um, through Marie Kropalka, invited the Democratic Committee to recommend some names, and they have come forward and recommended three people for consideration for the. Democratic seat for the Board of Registrar. Uh, we've all had the information in our packet. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm looking for a direction or a motion or a comment. Would you want to, well, maybe you don't want to say Joe? Um, thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to state, just, just in the interest of full disclosure, that I'm actually a member of the uh, Democratic Town Committee. So I was present at the meeting um, where uh, three names were, were uh, were put forward. My understanding of the process, and I, I confirmed this with council, is that the three names that were put forward uh, by the uh, DTC really are the only three names that we can consider for the um, for the position. Um, in my own opinion, I think that we have three candidates who have um, you know, given a lot of service to the town, and we have three excellent candidates. Um, knowing them more or less, e each of them makes it, you know, as it always is, all the more difficult to, exactly. to make one, a recommendation. Um, myself, I, I would actually like to um, move that we appoint um, Ms. Kraus, uh, Del Kraus, and um, I'll tell you why. I think. Second. I, I think that um, 
all of these candidates are excellent. If you look at them, they've, they've been involved in the schools. Some of them have been involved in town meeting and such. Ms. Krause has been involved in that also, but for many, many years. Um, and I think we also, we, we send um, a message, although we don't have the problems that, that, that you have in other parts of the country. I think that Ms. Krause is, um, uh, long uh, demonstrated commitment as a member of the Civil Rights Committee, the Fair Housing Task Force, uh, working with the Housing Corporation of Arlington through Calvary Methodist, shows a commitment to the disenfranchised and I think sends a message. At a time we're seeing at the national level, I think, uh, an erosion of voting rights and commitments to that fairness, I think that it makes her a particularly um, excellent candidate. So. I put that forward as a motion. So that was moved and seconded by, uh, Mrs. by Mrs. Mahan. Yeah, was so. there any further discussion or other candidates to want I, to be I was just going to make the point that uh, it's hard for us. Uh, I know Mr. Logan from town meeting and yeah. certainly know Ms. Krause, so, uh, but we haven't had a chance to interview them or anything. But since Joe has, I certainly support uh, Ms. Krause. Okay. Uh, I think it's ripe for a vote then. All those in favor of the motion to appoint Ms. Krause, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Now we're getting to the discussion of NLI Greenway. Um, Mrs. Mahan, you had asked that we uh, put this on the agenda for tonight to talk about. Please take it away. Um, and I don't know if, it, does the town manager want to speak first? Okay, uh, I asked that this be on the agenda. Uh, because of the ongoing issues now that the Greenway has been completed pretty much as um, last year the town manager Mr. Greeley the then chair myself and um, other town <coughs> officials from Arlington um, met with the then Commissioner Lambert of DCR discuss discussed about a dozen issues um, issues that had already been discussed and not followed up and issues that arose out of the project so I asked this to be put back on the agenda because I contacted the governor about three weeks ago and got the Department of Energy and Conservation, I can't remember who, one of the chiefs of staff to call me back um, on the myriad of issues. Unfortunately, um, and I'm not speaking for the town manager, but um, initially there was some conversation and seemed to focus on the signs on Boulevard and Lafayette. They've finally been done. DCR is ready to come out and um, coordinate with the town and put those back up. Uh, but all the other, and not that that is not an important issue, but on the list of 12, that was probably 11 or 12, you know, it's really the, you know, they also, DCR also came in and accidentally, inadvertently mowed some of the wetlands. So um, I did speak to the town manager about that and asked if CONCOM can get involved with that. But basically, this phone calls really aren't getting returned and we're not getting the appropriate answer. I know the town manager and deputy town <coughs> manager have tried um, <coughs> reaching out, calling, doing everything. This has been a five-year process and for some reason then MDC and now DCR really um, is not doing right by the town of Arlington on this project. So what I wanted to do tonight was since we have the signs and everything, everything's ready to go and I spoke to Officer Corey Rateau who's in the parking department. Um, the signs are up because it's a state law, it's illegal to park on budding um, conservation land. Um, that's why the signs were up there originally. But as a matter of housekeeping, since we can get this one thing done, um, I'd like to make a motion that we vote to amend our traffic rules and orders, Article 5, Section 2, Schedule 1, parking, that the no parking sides um, on the east side, Boulevard Road, Mass Ave, to Lafayette Street be posted as no parking. So those signs go back up. It's also on the neighborhood. We do have, you know, Boulevard Lafayette. We have Herbert. Both sides of that is posted. No parking. The reason why the signs were there before, the neighbors are begging for it because, especially on the lower end where it's really it, it's very narrow, um, it's just all commuter parking and you know getting out of the driveway. So I'd like to make that motion to allow us to get these signs back up and at least cross that off. Your motion is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Do you have any thought? I, I would, I, the only question I would have or put before the board is whether or not um, taking a parking vote without the parking issue having been on the agenda is, would be of concern. I, yeah, I wondered about the neighbors, whether they should yeah. have been informed. 
if you I, want I if you want to do it that way, I just it just seems like we can get this yeah. done. But it's whatever the let's, board's pleasure. I let's put it on the agenda and in, in, mm-hmm. uh, advertise it as that's fine. Uh, those streets. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah, and then yeah. we can. I know that neighbors they've been like, come on, but that but I I agree. And then the only other thing I would say, and I've had a conversation with the town manager, I'm just going to contact the governor again and say there was initial. Um, response and we started to move forward and it's just stalled there would you like us to add a letter th- that we I would sign? love that so if maybe if I could yeah I so I mean j- just to reiterate what Ms. Mahana said the DCR in my opinion has fallen short on their maintenance commitment in the mm-hmm. new Greenway I, I think the Greenway is a wonderful asset for the mm-hmm. community I think a lot of people in the community and from outside of the community use that Greenway coming to and from ALY for, for recreational purposes but if you walk it, bike it, run it, whatever you do, I think you can see primarily the knotweed, which is that invasive species that we've become familiar with, is, has not been tended to. Uh, in the areas that are board, uh, boardwalk, it's growing over uh, onto the boardwalk. Uh, and in the, the wetlands area, uh, particularly near sunny side, the maintenance is just not being kept up with. So I've been very disappointed in DCR's lack of keeping up with maintenance. Okay. Mr. Greeley. Why don't we have uh, you, Diane, and Adam uh, yeah. Or Adam write a letter that yeah, then you two approve and then bring yeah, to us. Is that, yeah, and then yeah. come from. The, and what I'll do is I'll forward to the selectman's office. Um, they already have it, but I don't want them to look at it. The original list of items that yeah. m- Mr. Grilly, um, the town manager, and that the then DCR commissioner discussed, yeah. and th- there were resolution of how they. Just so you I'll all put, have it as an FYI. Let's put that on the letter, actually. Okay. I mean, unless. Say, right. These are the things that we agreed to. Mm-hmm. These are the things that are done. These are the things that aren't done. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, I, I'm. I personally think I'm all on board with that. Uh, so, um, I made a motion. Motion to second t- by Mr. Greeley. So, uh, so nothing with signs. Uh, so we're not no. going to do the signs. No, no. We're going to ask okay. you to sign off on a letter that you haven't seen yet, but you understand what we're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You're relying on the good judgment of the town manager. I've, I've done it before, so I'll do it again. <laughs> and I apologize for kind of wasting our time with this as an no, agenda no, item, but... Right. Oh, okay. I'm happy to do that. No, um, all those in favor, we just want to let them yep. be here to yeah. talk about nope. it. Though. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> so, Mr. Manager, we left that in your court for, I think, the next step, and I'll be happy to help with that. Next up, discussion approval, Board of Selectmen and Manager Goals. Move approval. Second. Your motion and a second. Mr. Chapdelaine. Uh, so in the board's packet, uh, have, uh, are the updated goals coming out of our goal setting session back in, um, in June? Uh, updated them, revised them as we discussed, uh, attempted to capture best the, the board's comments for both the board's goals and then make the town manager's goals match appropriately or correspond appropriately. Uh, so I, I wanted to provide them to the board. And if the board is comfortable with them after reviewing them in the packet, we can approve them tonight. If there's further discussion, we could do that as well and make further revisions. Uh, so I'm open to what the board's prerogative is in that matter. Move we'll approval. You already did that, Mr. Greeley. <laughs> All right, just check. And I already <laughs> seconded it. <laughs> <laughs> can, uh, um, I'm completely fine with everything, but um, you know, Thompson schools on both of them oversee the completion and opening. Can we just take those off at this point? Would that be appropriate, or we could approve them and check them off as? Completed. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. we have to get some check-offs at the end of the okay. year. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. And the last shall be first. Seven B. <laughs> Continue to recruit and hire qualified professional exit employees at all levels of the organization. Ms. Rice. You going to hire her back? Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> with this, like, with this love. Yeah, exactly. We're so friendly. All right. All the. Continue yeah. to elect? <laughs> no. <laughs> all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank co- you. Uh, uh, correspondence received. Uh, move, a, move approval and rec- that we uh, refer the letter from uh, um, Ms. Dale Hughes uh, to the Public <laughs> Memorial Committee. Second. Addition, can I suggest that Mr. Harrington's be referred to the town manager? Mm-hmm. He's the appropriate yes, authority. And the Your wish is my command. Yes. Thank you. And the bylaw changes from John Warden. Do we have to? I don't. I'm not familiar enough with that organization. Do we have to approve those, or we just he's being? Well, I don't think so. Right. No, that's a, uh, that's yeah. a he's separate just private organization. Himself. Right. It's that's just for your information. And also I, asking if they have two openings, if somehow we could aid. That's in a good gathering. I don't know if he's asking us to post it as an opening. Maybe 
We can certainly comment, th thank you, that part of that uh, notification, which I appreciate from Mr. Warden, is that the Preservation Fund is looking for a couple board members, and that's part of the reason they made this change, is because they're looking for a couple specialties. It's Financial. down the bottom of page yeah. one. Finance officer and a real estate agent. Yeah, who want to join their organization. All right, so we have a motion, um, and I'm sure we had a second. Mrs. Mahan, I'm sure seconded it. No? Not that. Second. Mr. Byrne seconded it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Why wouldn't you second it? Because Mr. Byrne already did. I jumped, oh, I jumped quick on the oh, oh, on our goals. I would say, right I'll now, third it. I thought you didn't want to. No, I feel like I'm hard enough. Uh, Marie, uh, we're on new business. Shortest in history, Marie. Thank you. Ms. Rice. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not good at speeches, but I would just like to take the opportunity to thank the board uh, and Ms. Popelka and her staff and the town manager's office for all of your support over the past five years that I've been here. And uh, I am going to miss you all. Don't make us cry. <laughs> so I'll stop now. Right, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So on that topic I want to let the board know they were provided with a, a notice today that we will be celebrating Juliana on September 19th at 5 o'clock in the selectmen's hearing room we'll be saying goodbye to Juliana uh, so please attend uh, and let anybody else uh, know to attend that you think is appropriate uh, and I just like to say this being Juliana's last uh, meeting before the board it's been my great professional pleasure to work with Juliana and uh, I know we have our work cut out for her finding someone to sit to my left here on uh, every other Monday night. Um, but uh, I, I wish Juliana the best uh, in, the, in the future and her future endeavors. One other thing I want to add, those of you who were not at the 5K race yesterday are in the <laughs> company of four athletes in this room here tonight. So I'll let some of the other board members talk about it. But there's two board members, uh, an appointed uh, official as well as a member of the media were, uh, were on the, uh, on the race, in the race yesterday. So it was, it was a very nice. successful event. That's great. Kevin? How did you finish? Out of these four? <laughs> <laughs> well, you first is all I care about. Yes. You were first? Out of, out of the, these out four. Out of these four. Yes. yes. Out of these four. Of these so, I only, let's listen, take, listen, I was just trying to make sure that nothing happened to them along the track, <laughs> so I came up with the ring. And I drove it, and I got there ahead of you, is yeah, all yeah. I want you to know. But, uh, no, the only thing, you know, where we do have another meeting after this, I just would like to also publicly thank Juliana for her outstanding service. Um, I hope that these five years you have enjoyed working with us here in Arlington as much as we've enjoyed having you here. And we will be calling you weekly to get things done in the AG's office. Sure. But uh, thank you, Juliana. We'll be less without you. Diane. Um, I did, I'll probably echo the remarks that I said about Ms. Rice, Juliana, um, the night she announced that she was moving on to a position, position with the AG's office, which is that um, I'm really thrilled just on, as a woman um, that we have such a qualified professional woman who now will be go, going on to bigger and better and representing everybody well. Um, I, I know she'll succeed, uh, and I said it's a testament to her credentials and her experience that this opportunity has come along really hard to pass up. Um, I, I know you thought long and hard about it because you certainly have enmeshed yourself um, in Arlington and developed the proper skin that you need, especially as town council dealing with the many different entity, entities, and I know the Attorney General is probably t taking note of that, that you've continued on and weathered that storm um, and have come out the better for it. So I wish you nothing but um, good luck, good success in your career, and good health to you and your family. Thank you. Joe? I mean, it's just the same note, the big, 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 big hole. I mean, you've helped, you've been very helpful to me, not only here, but also, you know, when I was over at the school committee. 
I, and, and I did want to say one thing I forgot to say the last time is that uh, right after Steve and I were elected, I think the first one of the first people who called us and said, um, made themselves available to sit down and, and really review things with us was Juliana. She said, would, would you like to have a briefing on you know, policies and procedures and, and uh, you know, matters of, of import to a new board member? And she has a big manual that she put together and, and she, she went through that with us. And uh, she called and contacted us mm -hmm. and, and, and offered that. And it was um, just a great start to this, 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 this stint. So um, we hope to see you around. Uh, Around town, um, I just had a couple other, Go for it. other, Go. other um, just brief pieces. The race yesterday was was great. Yes, the chapter line was twentieth. Mr. Perron, I think, was one twenty sixth. I was two hundredth. <laughs> and we want to congratulate Mr. Wall. Was third in his age group. So. Which is uh, quite impressive. What you can run by your age group? <laughs> <laughs> um, there was, yeah. there, there it's was, like there a marathon. Was, there was, <laughs> there was, there was, there was, I never knew that. The, the visions go on quite a bit. Yeah. There was someone in their 60s who finished before me. I saw. So yes. fantastic. That always makes me. <laughs> that was me. I did it anonymously. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. No, that's fine. And there were a lot of volunteers out. There were a lot of people with signs and such around the, around the town as well, as well as the police. So it was really well coordinated and, and uh, a lot of involvement. And uh, I think last year they raised about 5,000. They had to raise more than that this year. There are 275 runners. So uh, <coughs> great, great event. Um, and I hope we can keep it, keep it going. Um, we want to uh, remind everybody about Thompson on those who are around, I think it's this Sunday at this 2 o'clock is the official right. opening, although all reports are that the kids have been going, it's been great, and the school is beautiful. I haven't seen it yet inside, so I hope I get a chance um, uh, then. Um, and lastly, um, Ms. Kropelka mentioned Town Day. The um, ATED is working with um, the Uncle Sam Committee. This month actually marks the 200th anniversary that Uncle Sam was recognized as a national symbol in, in the country. In town meeting, you may recall, approved one of those classic metal tourism signs, and it's going to be unveiled at 1 o'clock on town day. So you're, you're all invited to, to come down um, and, and help with the unveiling at, uh, at uh, 1 o'clock to um, kick that off and help beautify that spot. And we, we, ATED is hoping that, that very soon we'll have the tourism information booth there, but the, the sign will be a great <laughs> for That's us. That's a good start. Yeah. Steve. Um, yes, uh, those volunteers Joe mentioned were the Arlington High football team. So they were out helping out, and uh, that was great of them to uh, get involved. Um, That's why they told me to drop and give them 20. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, I'll echo everyone else. Just thank Juliana. She'll be missed um, personally and on a professional level. And... Uh, I'll see you soon, I'm sure. Thank We're you. We're going to have lunch. Yeah, we will. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have anything in addition to say. I don't have any new business. Move to adjourn. We have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>